welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere and there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also below this video you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So a massive shout out of thanks and appreciation to Maximum Gravy, Austin Witsit, John Kays, DL Hill, Julian Jeremiah, Tommy Swagonitz, Michael Kahn, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Will Brax, Mel B. Styles, Troy Shuker, Bose Nail, Samson, Maris, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Neo the One, Lost Cat FE, Rob W, Open Minded, Reese Pound, Del West Watson, Mike, Muted, Dick Earth Skeptic, Maria Neelands, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, Rob H, The Real Gabster, Windrider, Liam Nedrick Jr., Abraham Mohammed, Nyby, Adrian Quintana, Skeptic936, Life is Short, Fireball X, The Flat Earth Channel.com, Texas Mike, Edwin Johnson, and David Wayne Foster. So, another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now, I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their conversation while I set up for today's live show. That's what's happening. That's it. Yeah, exactly. The arguments are, there's nothing left for them. The knockout blow was delivered. As soon as the black swan hit, what was that, 2020? January 2020? Bang, now everything else is just hammering it home. Dexter, bam. Take that. Now what do you got? You go over to another channel and they're still talking about horizons and, and how much of, uh, uh, of mountains and buildings are missing and boats. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. You're not bursting like Batman and go, where'd you get her? <laughs> Yeah, that's me. That's, that's my new thing. Where's the radius for that? Where's the radius for that? They could be telling me something about a rectangle and I'm asking them for a radius. <laughs> Good morning. Morning, 10th. I'm sure that's not true, Neil. I'm sure you recognize where's the appropriate moment to ask for our. Well, Neil could ask. Neil's got another saying he could go with now he can say you're going to need a 90 for that yeah i know what to say everything, but almost everything i'm gonna find that crack villain guy and add him to um master b good morning eli good morning yes i, I could if, if you want yes please Right. Didn't intend that to kill the conversation. I'm waiting for ten. He usually um Oh, I just uh, oh, I just woke up. I'm going through my hot tea and trying to get caught up with you guys. Correct. Use guys. Use guys. So who do we got in uh, Discord, Nathan? Got Steve. Got George, got Mel, uh, Mishu, the one's just joined. And we've right, got so... almost exactly, and did I miss anyone? JS, 
match. There you go. All right, so I'm addressing Discord. Any anybody in Discord been hearing any uh, debates on other channels uh, about how Sexton works? You comment if you have. Uh, well, not really, no. Okay. Just here. Uh, okay, so you're hoping that after maybe a couple of, maybe three renditions of this argument, that people are going to be capable of going out there of their own volition and arguing it? Oh, no, no. You're gonna, it, it's going to be at least, at least minimum 10 repetitions of this argument before people go out there and start arguing it for themselves. Minimum. <laughs> no, I, I didn't say it towards any expectation. Uh, you can mention well, something. Well, actually, to think about it, uh, it was mentioned on uh, on Brandon's show, I think a couple of times, and uh, Adam was there, and so was Brian arguing it uh, that doesn't a couple count. of times. They're, they're yes. us. That's us. <laughs> we we can argue it oh, all day I, long. I, what am I, chop liver? I'm the one that brought it to Brandon. Right, but you're one of us. <laughs> what I'm saying is, they want to know if anybody else is if anybody else is using the argument besides the panel. But I guarantee you can go out and find people using the black swan. Right, that is a given at this stage. People do go out and use the argument. They do understand it. They pummel people with it. As for the sextant argument. Yeah, it's a great argument. Equally as good as the Black Swan. And that takes some saying. I've got to I've got to admit it. Right? It's as good as that argument. It's a different argument. It's a flat earth proof as opposed to a globe killer. It can work as a globe killer though, now can't it? So you know, it's a really cracking proof. It's just gonna take some time for people to have it sink in. You just have to keep going over and over and over it and have it yeah. not be refuted. Yeah, that's not that I mean that's a given. But I just want to know if if anyone's heard anybody else talking about it, even just a mere mention, but then it doesn't mean they have to be the person, you know, sharing the details about it. Because it's going to take, uh, like for example, Mitchell from Australia, who put out that great video. Uh, I think he said somewhere it took him eight months between, you know, being a father, a husband, and working, and going over the material and. Uh, making slide changes, you know, to put out that short 13 minute video. It took him eight months to do that. Uh, so uh, there is going to take time um, and, you know, research on the part of the person who's going to use it. But it doesn't take much if someone says, hey, I heard on a show someone talking about the sex step. I'm just seeing if it, it's even coming up. Okay, I've certainly seen that in comments. I've not seen it happen in terms of someone discussing it on a live show. So, bit of yes, bit of no. Okay. Yeah, it's just they've been offered. It's just they've been oh, offering on. false dichotomies. That's what they do. They can't put it into a false dichotomy. They can't represent the sexton argument with this is how it it's done on a flat plane and this is how it's done on a sphere, because it can't be done on a sphere. So there's no alternative model to offer up in this regard when they describe taking the parallel from the center of a pre spherical earth and the equator line it changes the angle so it doesn't work literally it just does not work yeah that, that is correct they um they presented to me a uh, again the argument of the northern star with its zenith and then a a straight line uh, meaning a right angle, uh, right through the zero degree. So zero, 20, 30, up until 90 degree of the Northern Star angle. And that is a right angle. That can only be achievable on a flat plane. Everyone along that line, depending of what longitude line is, it needs to have a right angle to Polaris, to the GP of the Polaris. But they offer a false dichotomy with the, the angles, the degrees of angles that they're talking about is uh, spherical, if you know what I mean, and not uh, angles of triangles, right angles. Sure, but when you shoot a star and get its GP and the 90 degree to it, that doesn't jive with taking a line from Polaris to the equator and then running it up parallel to the line that you've actually measured because that changes the angle. 
Yeah, yeah, correct. Agree. Uh, but the, the, but uh, so there's, talking about Polaris because that's that's what they bring on the table Polaris most of the time. It could be a different star with the same with a, obviously a different GP, but all the GPs they run parallel. But it's as close as you can get to non sequitur, because it's not what you're doing. So it's like okay, well that's fascinating. Is this done? No. So it's non sequitur then. You could do this on a globe. Mm, that's fascinating. Should we ask the Dick Earthers what they could do on a Dick Earth? Because who cares? It's completely non sequitur. It's not what's done. And if you did do it that way, it wouldn't work. So it's completely non sequitur. Uh, is it a red herring or non sequitur? It's probably closer to a red herring because they're trying to make it sound like it's got something to do with it when they draw 90 degrees to Polaris. So it sounds like it's kind of like it's addressing it. It isn't. So it's more like a red herring. Yeah, I agree. Eli. Come on, Eli, you're a fallacy guy. Is it a red herring or a non sequitur? I am not the fallacy guy. <laughs> I'm messing with you, bro. So in uh, response, they do have a 90. So when they're afraid of saying 90, they need a 90. And their 90 is assumed on the presupposition from the beginning, begging the question all the time, to central angle, central angle of a circle. So they say, they say circle from the middle to the circumference, that's where two lines can meet at, at the middle to create an angle. And so all they've done is measured the Earth actually with a sextant and the altitudes and the GPs on the flat plane where they get that right angle, and then they just move it to the middle. As, but as Nathan said, that's what they do and what they say are two different things. You're actually on the surface doing it, which makes you do it with the right angle or you can't do it. And then they say, well, yeah, that's right, but if we move it to the middle of a circle, then we can have two lines meet and there's a vertex, so we got gotcha. you. Well, no, then it doesn't work there either because <laughs> you're going to have a chord issue and you're still on the surface with an arc if you're on the globe and everything would be off again. So as much as they don't want to say 90, they need 90. Even for their presupposition, they need 90. Right, so they go, it's like a magician. Look over here where they wave their wand and hand. Right? Because look over here, we've got 90 over here. That's nice. But to triangulate a star, you need 90 degrees but to the GP, i.e. a straight line coming out from where you're measuring it to it. Who cares that you've got a 90 at the centre based on Polaris? Number one, that is not how it's done. Number two, you actually need 90 degrees below the star, which means Earth's flat. So what, you're going to tell us about a different 90 that's in a presupposed centre of a presupposed spherical Earth that's not being measured and not being used to triangulate this star? Who cares? That's right. If you go to Master B, I've got a slide on corresponding angles. Let me know when you're there. Just give me a couple of minutes. Yeah, take your time. The, um, they're they're going to end up losing on this one because everything I've ever shown from the beginning and what people are showing is material the baller sites on what a sextant does. I mean, there there is literally no flat earth sextant manual, a site on uh, the internet. There's no, there's no such thing. I mean, all you gotta do is download a few of the sextant manufacturers manuals, which are easily gotten uh, on uh, the internet and just read it. And they tell you, all the different things, and those are the things that I've shared. So if they're going to attack any arguments from our side, they're going to have to attack their own side, because all we're doing is telling them what, how section works and how it can't work. And, and so the minute you say, wait a minute, if it can't work on a curved surface, how are they using it on the surface that's supposed to be curved?
Well, hello. That's why I see you're the sexton. Because they're using it on a surface that doesn't curve. And that's why it works. Right, I'm back now. You want me to pop some makeup from right. Master B? Yeah, yeah. Okay, what's up? So this, uh, this is what they want to show. I'm showing it a little differently here uh, because this is what they're stealing from geometry. So you got two parallel lines and you've got a line running through it. And obviously the angles will be the same no matter where you do it. But notice everything has to be straight. Now what they're saying is that the two parallel lines are sun rays, sunlight. Okay, the two lines that are parallel, that's their sunlight rays coming, hitting the earth, which is not depicted here. That line going through it is your zenith from the star directly overhead to the center of an earth. So all they're borrowing is this geometric image and placing it on a circle and saying that line coming through the two is meeting at the center and the sun light is coming and meeting at the center. So there's your corner, there's your vertex. But in reality, uh, that bottom, uh, how can I put it here? Sunlight, number one, doesn't come in parallel. I mean, I, I dare them to show it to me because we know it's, it's divergent. So it's, it's over for them. That's why I said the quickest way to kill the argument is to show how, how the sun works and light killed the globe. Because sunlight comes in divergent. That's number one. So they can't even use this. I don't even know what to call it when they use an argument that's uh, based on a fallacious reasoning that the sunlight's coming in parallel when it's not. But it, that's the quickest way it dies right there. But on the surface of a sphere, there's curvature. They keep telling us we live on the ball. But sex that can work on the surface with curvature with GPs of stars that are five, six, even 10,000 miles away. Impossible. So it, I mean, the sexton kills them there, the sunlight kills them here. But there's no way out for them. I mean, these are the things that I pulled off their own sites, the arguments. I mean, that's why I'm, I can't wait for someone to challenge it because it's like, well, I didn't make it up. I got it from this site. Oh, well, it's right here. Oh, it's in the it's in the manual of the manufacturer. That's what they say. What mic are you on? You're on your Yeti? Yeah. You turn the gain down. Let me turn down. I'm not close to it. Then. Turn it right down. Check. check one, two. Check, check. One more time. Okay, let me else. see if I'm turning. Uh, yeah, check, check one, two. Check one, two. Yeah, that's a bit better. You just, you, you just too high, too hot. It's just setting off the compressor every time. How about now? I'll go all the way. And you, you've moved away from it as well, though, haven't you? <laughs> yep. Uh, well, I, I, I'm not. I'm normally like this during the show. Right now, I'm right here, back here. Still a little bit too hot, but it's well, okay. It's better than yeah. it was. I'll give you some advice. It'll sound much better if you get closer. Yeah, it'll get closer. Sound much crispier. And turn the gain right down. As low as it'll go. Or just off as low as it'll go. And uh, congrats on your new mic. Me? Or 10th? Oh, 10th. Uh, is it a new mic? No, I've had it. I'm, I'm closer and the gain is down now. Testing. One, two, one, two. How, how low? All the way down. All the way down. And it's still setting off the compressor. So back off a couple of inches about, as well. <laughs> how about now? Perfect. Is, is this better? Much better. Okay, That's you know what it is. You know what it is. It's on the table, and I just lifted it up. So could it be the vibration? No. It's what you're doing is each time you start talking, you're sending a jet of air into the capsule and overloading it. So the compressor catches that, which is good because it doesn't overload the line on my output for the audience. But by the same token, it just doesn't sound very nice. Okay. That's better. Much better. All right. So much for reclining. <laughs> 
<laughs> I just want you to sound good, and, you know. I know, I know, I, I appreciate. It. No, the, the Yeti's not new. It's it's a while, but uh, um, I, I got my office back in my house, so um, I'm no longer the man cave with uh, earbuds. So at this level, talking at this volume, you're perfect. But if you got any more enthusiastic, it would start overloading. Just so you know. So if I lean back and get enthusiastic, would that be better, Nathan? Perfect. Yes. <laughs> Well, I, yeah, it'll subtly compress it. It's just it can't cope with the jet of air. It's, that's just overloading. So it's always going to start kicking in the compressor. And because you're not actually that loud, just what you need to do is offset the mic slightly. So in other words, if you imagine if you went, Puh, a gust of air would come out of your mouth in that direction. You don't want that to go directly into the mic. So just offset it by a couple of degrees. And then when okay. you talk, the, the air, the blast of air that comes out of your mouth won't actually hit the diaphragm. The sa it'll still pick up the sound the same. So just offset it by a couple of degrees. How about now? Does this sound better? Miles better. Yes. Okay, it's an offset. That, that's perfect. Okay, great. Now he's got the sound together. I have hang to on. Hang on. Nathan <laughs> likes technical. Give him, give him the tech he needs each day. He had enough of it. Anyway, I, was, <laughs> I, had your, I had your show on yesterday as I was working. and working until late hours of the night. And uh, so this Jamaican guy says to me, what are these guys talking about? Talking about Earth? I said, yeah, I'm talking about the reality that Earth is, is not a, what we're told it is, a planet. It's, um, it's flat and motionless, just, just the way you experience it every day. First thing he said to me was, well, what about the scientists? How come these guys are not going to the scientists? How come they're not doing this or doing that? If, if it is what, it, what you say it is, then what is anybody doing about it? I found that interesting. Yeah, like suddenly we should have to do something about it. It's like, we have done something about it. We stopped listening to the lies that they tell us. Well, shouldn't you be out there punishing them for the lies? No, that's not my responsibility. However, I've made a good show about it, telling other people about how they've been subject to lies, and then they've got their choice to make, haven't they? Then they can do something about it. That would be either continue to subject themselves to the same exact lies, or push it a bit further and start lying to yourself a bit. That also works. Or you can recognise that you've been lied to, and then maybe adjust your behaviour a little bit as a result. It's entirely up to you. Uh, what's that? What am I doing about it? Oh, absolutely nothing. I've made a YouTube show out of it, that makes me a living. So I've done quite nicely out of it. Doesn't mean I've got to go out there and change the world or change anybody else's opinion even. That's not my responsibility. I'll just give you the information. You can do it with whatever you like. Yeah, Nathan, I, put, I, I, missed, I missed it, Neil. What did you say to the Jamaican guy? He was just asking, well, what are you doing about it? In other words, like, what about the scientists? If, if you say this is what it is, why are you guys not doing anything about it? funny thing no, is we, i found we, it interesting hold on i found it interesting that after after about an hour and a half of listening to show listening to the show he he, he sounded irritated you know but then i began to explain things to him and he had more questions he had what about space uh, so there's no planets and you know the regular everyday questions you get when you're confronted with reality but he was so a little why agitated you, but why did you let that fly Meaning, uh, when he said, "Why aren't you talking to professors and this that?" Um, Who let it slide? What did you? You didn't tell me what you said to that to respond to that. You didn't, it didn't sound like what I would have said, which was. That's because you're Eli and I'm Neil. I would not have said what you would said. What but gotta, you didn't. What, what, mean, hammer you, him down? Did you inform him that we do and they ignore us? Is what I'm asking you. Of course. Oh, we're listening to a show right now. This YouTube thing. Then I began to explain to him how how do you experience Earth, and it's that I'm not going to go over there with a freaking whip. That's, that's not what I do. Listen to the show. Go out there and look for yourself. How do you experience it? Hey Nathan, uh, pun intended. I've got the corresponding slide to the corresponding angle. Good morning. Good morning, Chaka. I've popped it up. It's the one with the celestial horizon that we were detailing earlier, right? Yeah. So if you go to the the one I put up first, which is the corresponding angles you know, from geometry, show that one again, just you know, quickly. So if everyone could see this, all right, 
two straight lines and the third one but the two are parallel obviously you get same angle now let's go to the image with the celestial horizon so this is how they are bastardizing geometry <laughs> so in this one the straight lines is the yellow from the sun so they have to have sunlight come in parallel or the it doesn't work whatsoever that's why sunlight kills the globe instantly because it comes in divergent not the way they show it here and they got that central angle at the center of the earth uh, and see the parallel lines there and the sunlight being the other line and this is how they get that central angle in a circle but the minute you get on the surface of the earth how could they have that straight line as shown here because their surface is curved and then same thing with an airplane because the ground underneath the airplane is dropping away as well just from a much higher altitude uh, go to the next slide and when you look at this same topic that we're on from another viewpoint say three circles of equal altitude <clears throat> from this view those circles you see that box in each of those circles that's your zenith position the gp and the box is a 90 and that's covering thousands and thousands of miles and there's the fix where the sailor is and all that has to be flat and straight like the geometry says for the angle to work that right angle that you see for each star coming to the feet of the observer when he makes dip correction to get to sea level. The next one. And then they describe exactly what it looks like from this point of view, which is really the previous slide shown, but this way, three circles of equal altitude with star one, star two, star three. There's that 90 box. Whenever you see that box, that means the Earth is flat because that's thousands and thousands of miles of flat and you're triangulating your position. So you do need that right angle, but it could only work on a flat plane. Thank you. Very good, very good. What about um, an astrolabe? Right. Doesn't it pretty much work the same way? Pretty much? Yeah. Yeah, because I, I remember. That, uh... Oh, my bad. Go ahead, brother. Uh, no, I was just gonna say. I remember seeing a a meme from this. Uh, remember, you know that website, the Flat Earth debunking one, uh, Flat Earth the dot, dot uh, WS or something. I remember they meant they had a a, a meme, the astrolabe saying, oh, "It's a common misconception that flat earthers think uh, it only works and was designed for a flat Earth, and yet." They claim it's it's designed for a spherical Earth. Yeah, all they well, need to do is say it. They just say it. Yeah? Like, when they've got a really weak argument, they'll even throw up that argument in straw man dichot false dichotomy against us, like us falling over an edge. So they just say it works and rely on the fact that it's more complicated than most people can wrap their head around. And if they're being trained in it, they'll be trained with the starting presupposition that it's a sphere, laid out nice and clear, and then they'll just detail how it's done on a flat plane without mentioning the fact that you're not actually doing it on a sphere. And again, that works quite nicely too. So there's no necessity to say anything other than, of course, this only works on a sphere. Because it takes someone like 10th Man to come along and go, let's have a look how that actually works. And then you look at it in detail and go, it only works on a flat plane. Um, I've, what Adam showed, how Alberuni got the... I'll let you finish it up, Nathan. Uh, Al Bruni used an astrolabe, if I'm not mistaken. And what did he use it for? Measure to a flat plane. To get, the the yeah, to measure a flat plane to triangulate to get the height of the mountain. Exactly.
Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Live. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live and there's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Also below this video you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy. Most importantly if you'd like to join the discussion simply mute the page you are currently watching then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the nature of Earth. If you do join please don't swear if you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel, so please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. One last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by Eli, 10th man, Neil, who else did I miss out, uh, Chocolate Saiyan, and a whole bunch of people in Discord. So welcome, one and all. Morning, morning. Good morning. Hello. You, you. Were you, Jimmy, two times? 10th. Morning, morning. I'm going to go get the papers, get the papers. Greeting, greeting. Right, I'm going to do the housekeeping, do the housekeeping. Any evidence of a physical? <laughs> <laughs> Any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon, formerly known as the curve of the Earth? You're gonna need R. You're gonna need R. <laughs> you know, I tell you, Nathan, when you come out with it, it just cracks me up. Your timing is impeccable, boy. I just check my script. That's right, Neil. Timing is <laughs> everything. Any evidence of axial rotation of the Earth-based variety? Uh, since it's all a presupposition, assumption uh, to to build their uh, false reality for us, no, you're still going to need R for that. Also, might need access for that too. Also, you might need to beg the question. What assume an R value? Yes, that's correct. Surprised yeah. the panel didn't say it. <laughs> no, nobody. You're gonna need half of that. Too much. I can't hear it enough. I've got to be honest. I don't. I don't. We haven't until now had a concise way of ending each housekeeping question. If we did want to rattle through them, there was always. If I was like, right, let's dispense the housekeeping quickly, as opposed to dispense with it completely, like we did yesterday. It well, didn't even dispense with it. Didn't even come up. But there was a good conversation with Crack Villain. I think his name was. Good chap. Um, hopefully we'll have him back on our main regular panel. I've added him or asked for him to be added to the Skype server that use, is used to build up this panel that you can see with Tim Osman in the background and his toe tag. Anywho, um, that conversation resulted in no housekeeping, but should we do them and we say, well, look, well, we've got a conversation, but we still want to actually dispense with all of these questions because it's preemptive for anything this fundamentalist religious zealot we're going to be debating with is going to say so let's rattle through him anyway and see what his answer is or her answer is before we actually get back into whatever was being debated in the pre-show which does happen occasionally and in this instance you just have to say you need r for that there's a couple of exceptions but for the most part you can just say yeah you're going to need r for that earth curve you're going to need r for that axial rotation you're going to need r for that so i don't mind if that's the answer even if it's not a day that we're looking to keep the housekeeping concise because it's absolutely the case. Whoever just said that from Discord is spot on. Aren't we going to need to beg the question? Yep. And what we're going to use to beg that question of a sphere Earth beneath our feet? Well, the R value inserted into whatever we're doing. Any evidence of the R value? <laughs> Earth radius. Any evidence? No. You're going to need our... Someone yesterday... <laughs> Oh, no, no. Actually, no, no, no. I I'll wait, because it's, it's more appropriate for another one, for another housekeeping question. Any scientific evidence of gravity? No. What's that? In fact, <laughs> in fact the G in there, um, 
is from the center, so you're definitely going to need R for that. But someone told me it has nothing to do with R. Can't have G with that R. I said, what? I said you need to go to from too. one center of a presupposed sphere to another center of a presupposed sphere. You're going to need what? <laughs> I don't know what these people are on. Yeah, you're going to need R for that. Somebody in chat did that to me. Say, no, you do not need a radius for gravity. The center okay. of M1. What's that then? The center of M1 is the Earth radius. Exactly. Didn't they just say that about the sextant? It has nothing to do with triangulation? Good point. But if you already have a radius, why would you ever, ever say that you don't need a radius? When it's been debunked by the Black Swan. Then, whenever it comes up, you say, oh, we don't need that. It's like Earth Curve. Well, Earth Curve blocks boats and buildings. Here's the drop value. Mm, and you're going to need a radius value and a physical edge for that. We don't need an edge. Spheres don't even have edges. What are you talking about? There's no edge to block the boat I just said was getting blocked by the sphere edge that I'm claiming has got a drop value. What do you mean? We don't need Earth Curve. In other words, they are, on the anti-flat Earth side of this argument, more than willing to relinquish the fundamental premise of the globe argument they're defending if we debunk it. They'll just relinquish it. Like a, I don't know, coyote gnawing off its own legs when it's caught in a bit of barbed wire. I don't need those. <laughs> just chew them off. <laughs> yeah, let's argue about whether a sphere has an edge or not instead of talk about how it's actually supposed to be blocked or something. Right. Remember how that was like the, the, the hot comeback <laughs> to the black swan and to what we were saying, you guys have a physical sphere edge. They were like, eh, spheres don't have edges. And, and that's where they stood for about 10 minutes. <laughs> that's standard, that. standard chat response to that now. So any children listening, cover your ears. So if the edge of my balls can block the view of my feet, but... The physical geometric sphere edge horizon that used to block boats and buildings has been debunked by the black swan. You can have them cover their ears now. Uh, Why did uh, I just uh, come uh, in? Me uh, talking about my balls. I'm sorry, Arwen. Uh, hello. You should have said, should have said earmuffs for Arwen. <laughs> earmuffs. The bottom line is they're relinquishing their own claim. They'll more, spend all day holding up beach balls and showing you that something that's beyond the geometric edge of the beach ball can have the bottom of it blocked that's them showing you a physical geometric limitation based on a sphere basketball whatever they're using blocking something in the distance exactly as is shown or was two seconds ago on screen you know they have a side profile view claiming that you're having a physical earth curve edge like the ball blocking whatever it is in the distance as soon as you point out that it's beyond those geometric limitations of physicality to block stuff they go we don't need an edge What's that? What edge? Spheres don't have edges. We're talking about. I've been told uh, by a couple of people in comments on my channel, uh, my on my latest video, that uh, the, the speed of light has nothing to do with the distance to Belarus. <laughs> so that's a, that's another relinquishment, isn't it? Yeah, it's fundamental to it. What are they talking about? Who knows? I mean, they're just like the, the, uh, Bob the science guy said that he didn't say it had nothing to do with speed of light, but he said because I don't like the speed of light, he'll say he give it to me in parsecs. It's like, well, you're missing the point, Bob. The speed of light is the whole distance to <laughs> your supposed Polaris, so 443 light years, you know? Uh, and then I have other commenters uh, telling me that it has nothing to do with the speed of light. And another guy said for me, he says, he said, the distance to Polaris and, and the, the whole angle thing has nothing to do with, to do with C or R, <laughs> right? The C being the speed of light. Brian. The R being the R Brian, yeah, Brian go, okay. just shh, don't, don't talk about the light in the light years, man. Shh. <laughs> yeah. Right? Don't, don't yeah. talk about that. <laughs> just ignore that. Maybe the flat earth or the silly angel, just ignore that. That we measure that shit in light years. Don't it's, it's things like Einsteinian light years that that tie them into specific R values and the scale being set at a particular distance to the sun. You know, those things are pretty difficult to change when you've got fixed speed for the light to travel over, and 
all of those assumptions tie into the way that it's scaled with Kepler's third law. But if you're going to back engineer other aspects of other things into that, like the speed of light, it gets it more cemented at a certain value. They can't get away from the value of R because it's tied in so many intrinsic ways. And that's as it should be. I'm, I'm not complimenting the heliocentric model in this regard, but, you know, obviously if they're claiming it's a rock at a set radius value, then that rock radius value should not change. You know, and it doesn't for the most part. I mean, it has. You can easily find references and examples of that. Same with the distance to the sun. But once you have a, a sort of more coherent, coherent model and more aspects of it tie in with other aspects like how far is it based on how fast the light's travelling as opposed to how we scale it, you know, with uh, Kepler's third law, you can make the two tally and go, well, that's right then. You know, it gives more um, credence to your claim when you're applying what you see to a philosophy or in this case, the mathematics of a speed of a light, which I don't think even think has got a journey to measure the speed of, but that's just my own personal opinion. Um, you know, that, that it ties it in more for them, which, like I say, on the one hand, it's a double-edged sword. It, it lends more credence. Look, this all matches up. If you calculate the distance to the sun by way of scale and then you do it by way of using Einsteinian mathematics, they both come out the same. Check it out. So that must mean it's right, right? Well, no, not at all. You've just got a nice, coast, uh, consistent... Uh, uh, notion that ties you to a specific R value. So when we destroy that R value, it in turn destroys almost everything else that we cover in housekeeping because they're all dependent on it. I, I put up a video there just on this on the topic of the housekeeping question. We're on. I put up a video um, to Quantum Marissa uh, in the war room in the past few days, and it was from Geron, uh, Geronism, and he was covering. A uh, conversation that Brandon had, Brandon Toy had, with uh, Bob the Science Guy last month. And Bob the Science Guy uh, g uh, gave a calculation of the radius of the Earth based on the apparent horizon, and it was 15,000 plus miles. So, and he literally said that he's like, I mean, that it's still a sphere, it's just bigger than we thought. So he's relinquished the R value. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's in that. It's in that. He relinqu relinquished the R value. Yeah, it changes everything. So it throws his distance to the sun. It, I've, for the very reason I've just given in terms of why it needs to be cemented in stone, metaphorically and physically in their reification of their model. That's why you can't just change it. I mean, we had the same response to the black swan. Oh, well, that's just got a bigger radius. People don't realise the implications. So when Mr Sensible said at best you've debunked the radius, he's just like, well, that just means it's bigger, right? Uh, no, suddenly the entire model collapses in on itself if you change that value. So, no, it's not just as good as, well, so what, you've changed the radius. Uh, no, physical rocks don't have changing radii. That's not how it works. Certainly not how you're claiming it works when you demand that we accept, based on that radius, that there's a physical obstruction called Earth Curve Edge. That premise is what you're fighting for. So to tell us you don't have it anymore is to tell us you don't have a sphere Earth beneath your feet anymore. I'm yeah. telling you, they don't think before they answer. <laughs> or we live on a dodgeball I mean, or a spongy ball or something. I had some kind of personal though. I, I saw that video from Jaron, and I, I'm going to do this. I, I hate criticising my own side, and I'm being told by a few other people, don't do this, don't attack your own side. But I'm going to do it anyway, right? I'm sorry, Jaron, I've got to do this. I give you lots of props, so this isn't like... Just just take it for what it is, right? I had to tell Tenth off Wait, the same let's thing. Let's put the weight of... Uh... Yeah, I love Jaron too. Yeah, just to soften. Okay, I love you. I love you. <laughs> we love Jaron, right? Jaron's ace. Just say that first and foremost. I know that's why Eli's going, oh, what's going to go on? What's going down? I've got to defend Jaron. Right, don't worry about it. Right, Tenth did the same thing. Started talking about Bob and immediately got into how creepy his eyes were and how scary he looks and how much he's fearful of him personally. Right, can we stop doing this? Right, it's the third time it's happened. I almost stopped QE from doing it when he he just led with it. So I'm like, I can't cut him off immediately. But that was basically what QE led with. And then following that, Tenth Man then followed it. I agree with QE. Look how creepy his eyes are. And then Jaron did the same thing. He led with that. It's like, God, can we not just focus on the argument? Can we please stop talking about how creepy Bob the Science Guy's eyes are and how scary he looks and how he's like, you wouldn't want to be around him and all this sort of personal crap that's just not relevant to his argument when it comes to the sexton or increasing radius values to be on the size of 
the presupposed orbital path of the moon in the case of the black swan that's what we have to focus on not how bloody creepy his eyes are jaron so just please i never got well, to jaron is I never got to, you cut me off so fast, I never got to say what I wanted to say. So I knew where you were really... going immediately. I agree with well, QE. If you oh, look at his eyes, I've been a salesman. No, I, I, but I never got to finish it, and I was going to respond to what the QE said about his eyes, but uh, that'll be for another day. Just for a, for a day never, Karen hopefully. Is... But yeah, it's Karen just one of those, I cut, you off, I cut you off immediately, because it just tarnishes the argument. I'm a good pupil of eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you worried about? I can't lie. Not I can't well, lie. I, I'll answer that. I, I, I. Neil, ask that question again, please. What are you worried about? Jaron is not Bob. He can handle it. I'm not worried about Jaron. I'm worried about the general perception of our argument in absolute terms. Unfortunately for us, we are under... 3,000% scrutiny by comparison to our anti-flat earth counterparts that can literally get make mistakes overtly and have their compadres pat them on the back and just sort of brush it under the carpet move the subject along so it's not noticed things of that nature happen all the time us if we get a comma wrong that's held against us now me I'm all day long being told about my attitude towards people so it's not like I'm an angel or anything but how creepy and scary Bob the science guy's eyes are you know, it's just one of those things that seems to be getting focused on just a little bit more than it maybe needs to be. So, you know, can we just maybe potentially lay off talking about how creepy Bob the Science Guy looks? Yeah, okay, he looks creepy. Can we all move past that now? I totally agree. I mean, I never <laughs> see the point in pointing out physical things. I have no interest. Like, whatever someone looks like is what they look like. He's very confident in himself if you hear him talk. So he has certainly no problem with his own appearance. Um, and if there's anything, if there's anything going on with his eyes, it might have something to do with the fact that he just had to relinquish uh, a belief that was held for God knows how, how long. You know, so that that won't help. That won't help to look at the glazed look in someone's eyes. Well, you gotta have somewhat of a glazed look if you're gonna have a full conversation with Brenda about this coming out of nothing and how did it know to be food? Like, I mean. <laughs> Imagine the intelligence level in that conversation right there. So yeah, yeah that's a man after my own Creepy. heart right there, chocolate. So <laughs> exactly, if you're gonna do that, do it the way chocolate's done it. A subtle dig on topic that's actually got 20, 30 percent of educational value in that statement that chocolate just made. But a nice little jab below the ribs, right, chocolate? That's the way to do it. Well, if we took a if we took a vote right now, the nays would lose, the eyes would have it. <laughs> uh, Kent sees this very clearly. Uh, well, right. uh, on that note, though, I do want to give Jared a shout out because I turned on his live stream the other day, and he was—he had like a what did he call it? The NASA Comedy Hour or something like Yo, that. that I saw that too. Oh uh, my it, god! Can we all just confirm that? I don't know what happened to Jared, but his—he's on fire. Is all over the place now, bro. What? It was the funniest thing I've heard in. in I'm glad you're not the only one to wow. notice this. So, <laughs> I is very good. loved it. Yeah, let's do a, a, con a concise shout out to Jaron because I don't know what he's changed in the last, I don't know, it's probably the last fortnight, but I found myself clicking on Jaron video after Jaron video after Jaron video. Go, this is ace. Wow, this is great. Oh, wow, I'll leave a comment on this. You know, in other words, everything he's putting out at the moment, I'm picking up, man. I love it. So all of Jaron's stuff, check me out. I've given him a criticism after. <laughs> I'm just like every other troll dick out there, aren't I? I know, you know. But now we've cleared that up. Let's move on to the actual end of the shit sandwich, which is shouting him out in a good way and saying, man, you're on fire at the moment if you're listening to this, Jaron. Um, I don't know what you've changed or why you've decided to maybe change the direction, but it's great. You know, you're, you're on fire as far as I'm concerned. Back to form. I have to add, <laughs> I mean... I don't know. I don't the, the the research he put into his video, and if you haven't watched it yet, Arwen was the first one. Arwen was the first mm -hmm. one to put me on to his video when he came on this show one day and said, "Hey, did you guys see journalism's quote that tells us we've all been lied to?" And I've watched that video maybe three times now, and it's three hours long, and I'm about to watch it four fourth. Reason being is because 
even though I knew the earth was flat, I didn't know that um, that um, what I what I was under the impression that academia was under the impression that they had evidence for a heliocentric universe. And quote after quote, they say, ah, we don't have evidence, but that's how we feel. So very big kudos to Jer Jaron for that video. Right, clearly somebody, yeah. in the ch somebody in the chat's picked up on <sighs> double-edged sword telling people not to do something. So I'll read out your super chat. Thank you very much for the support, first and foremost. A. Bowden 500 says, here's a few quid to buy Bob the Science Guy some dark sunglasses to hide his super creepy eyes. Yeah, okay, telling people not to do something will result in the complete opposite. However, because you've given me money, I'm not going to complain that much. So thank you very much for the super chat. Really appreciate the support. We haven't finished housekeeping, so any evidence? Of well, if that happens, he'll be a shady character then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look, this subject's going to polarise a lot of people, so... <laughs> I see what you did there. Any evidence of the distance to the sun? No. What's the sun anyway? I don't know. An apparent distance, perhaps. Got a speed for it. I'm sure the summit would require to have it, though. What, what do you reckon, Brian? Well, it has absolutely nothing to do with the speed of light. Certainly claim to, though, eh? One AU. <laughs> the sun has nothing to do with the speed of light. <laughs> yeah, the whole, the whole thing is based on it. Based on an R value and the speed of light. There's no distance to anything in the sky. Because they're all lights, and they're all based with the moon. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. I can't remember about the moon. But that's definitely based on an R value. But uh, other than the moon, everything else is based on the speed of light. And I'm sure the moon somewhere was based somewhat on the speed of light as well at this stage. But, uh, but uh, yeah, they're all based on the speed of light. There is no one-way speed of light. So if there is no one-way speed of light, there cannot be a two-way. Because that would mean a two-way, a one-way would be half of the two-way. Is one way half of the two-way? No. Who is out there claiming that? Nobody. You know why? Because there's no, there is no one-way. And if there's people no... have a one-way, yeah. I was going to say, if there's no two-way, there's definitely not going to be a three-way. Story of my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but wait, are you saying that... Story of your life, not mine. <laughs> but are you saying that the actual speed of the light wasn't even, like, figured out on Earth? It wasn't even measured? It's based on the assumption of the sunlight? Let me rephrase that for Brian. How do we get the speed of light, Brian? Well, it would start off with... Um, well, uh, you're talking about the one-way speed or the two-way speed. We're going to ignore Trump speed. Hold on, Neil. Hold on. Arwen, go ahead. The speed. Get on with it. No, the that's... Ah, oh, stop. Arwen, don't, don't do that. Just repeat your question, Brian. If you don't know the answer or you don't know what to ask for, just say that. Yeah, I, 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 are you looking for the one-way speed or the two-way speed? So I was asked, uh, which one? I don't know. I, I preferred a Stop. measured. Speed. That's okay. You don't know. That's Stop okay. Stop. Way. Hello. Don't need the. Don't need the babble afterwards. He doesn't know, Brian. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. The the two way speed, right? That's not based on the one way speed because the one way speed was never measured. The two way speed is based off of two. Uh, sorry, it's based off of several assumptions. I think it's about three or four assumptions and two averages. Okay, the several assumptions start off with we're, we're on a globe uh, and that globe is rotating and the globe is going around uh, the sun uh, in an offset elliptical orbit over a 12 month period. The two averages is an average of the globe Earth's radius value, something that doesn't exist. And, <clears throat> and the, uh, uh, also the, 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 uh, the offset elliptical orbit of the sun, the average uh, of that over a 12 month period. So, like, you know, because the, the globe Earth is constantly changing its position in, in, in accordance to the sun day to day. So that's what that, the two-way speed of light is based on uh, uh, four assumptions and two averages. But the whole lot rests, right, on two things. Well, it rests only on the one-way speed of light. But if you want to be comical about, about it, it rests on the R value. 
and there is no more value for a glow bird. There is a okay. calculated one, or there is a, a claimed one, but there is no measured or value. So there is no measured speed, speed of light in any way, shape, or form. Perfect. How about the one way? <laughs> yeah, we we just explain that. Well, uh, is, is, it, is it just me, or did anybody else? Uh, maybe it's because I'm a silly Dragon Ball lover, right? <laughs> Dragon Ball is a huge lover, but. <laughs> The, with the story of oh if the sun i mean i'm sure we've all heard if the sun went out now we wouldn't know about it for like eight minutes <laughs> right so does anybody else just think of like at that point in their life thought of the sun as like a giant kamehameha just shooting <laughs> like this these light beams away from it in every direction because of that ridiculous story of oh, if it went out now, we wouldn't know about it for eight minutes. Yeah, like that's it's just traveling from here to there. It's ridiculous. That, 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 the point of the story is to give you this notion with a little story along with it, so you can conceptualize their idea of light having a journey and the time it takes to make that journey. Well, that that idea I think is something that we potentially have taken out of context with one of our own conventions time itself is a concept so it's one of those I, I just think that's a story that's there to lead people to a better understanding conceptually about what they mean when they say this is how light works and this is how fast it goes therefore if it's traveling at a speed it's got a journey it's coming out the sun like a bullet and that bullet will take seven and a half whatever eight minutes to get to us therefore if it exploded it still set off its last bullet after it exploded it disappears completely within however long they're going to say this example takes and then the bullet carries on coming towards you until the last one disappears and what you then see is the remnants of whatever the the bullet equivalent of the explosion would be eight minutes later it's just like you say way of making you understand that it's got a journey and that's how long it's going to take to make that journey if i was going to start somewhere to find out what the speed of light is. The first thing I'd find out, well, I, I think it's been, I think they already have a calculation for this anyway, is the speed of electricity, right? Because electricity is connected to light somehow. Right? There's definitely some connection there, right? Um, so what speed does electricity move at? I don't see um, it in that uh, way. Because uh, when you talk about electricity, it's more like you've got a load of marbles, right? So you've got a load of marbles all in a, in a hose. They're like loose in a hose, but they're all touching each other. Now, if you put one marble in one end of the hose, one falls out the other end. Now, can you can you ascribe a speed to that? Because technically speaking, each marble's move very, very, very slowly as you've pushed one in. But the result at the other end, which could be a considerable distance away, is basically instantaneous, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's the correct direction to take, but it's where I'd start. You know, it's where I'd start. Because when I switch on the light in the house here, the light above me uh, on the ceiling, I switch it on and it seems to come on almost instantaneously. But the only thing that might be slowing it down is the electricity getting to it or something. I don't know, but that's where I'd start. Now, uh, I might go nowhere with that. That might end up being a, a proven null, right? But uh, I don't even know if you could do scientific method on, on this. How could you do it? How do you, if you have to, like, even manipulating light, uh, how is that going to do anything for you? I, I don't know. Even if you compare lightning, you mean you'd be timing how long it took to get to ground through a medium. So you could ascribe certain aspects of speed to electricity, but I just think, again, it's like the electricity itself is the lightning, isn't it? As opposed to that moving through a medium to ground, which you could time. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't be looking at lightning, lightning too much because that's plasma. So that being plasma, plasma would cause it to um, would cause it to have maybe a different rate than me. The rate of the constant rate of me having the light switch on in my room, you know, for five hours, whatever that constant rate would be. It'd be more that I'd be looking to measure as opposed to lightning because I, I can't. How do you? How do you, I don't know. I don't know where you start to measure lightning. Yeah. Uh, wow. of, of, Good question. Of, of I don't, hold on, hold on, hold on. You just said I don't know where to start when it comes to big, to measuring light. Well, this is right in the realms of scientific discovery, right? That's what we talk about when we talk about things like the delayed choice quantum eraser. It's got a time aspect to it, right? Or the double slit experiment itself. 
when they're talking about light. Why have those things come to pass in the first place? Well, it is the journey of discovery in terms of light and them trying to study it. That's why they're doing those experiments. It's not like someone just went, oh, I wonder why that light passing between those really, really tiny little aperture between the leaves, why does that light split up like that? Why does it diffract? Nobody's done that. It's like they've done experiment after experiment after experiment, and then they eventually get to that stage. And then beyond that stage, double slit in this example, you go one step further onto the delayed choice quantum eraser, built around similar principles. But the same thing applies, right? In terms of them just deciding to do that double slit or quantum eraser experiment, they didn't. So you could argue, as we do, well, what was at what point did they come across the natural phenomena in nature as we oversimplify it to pull apart a an opponent's argument that often doesn't even have a phenomena but we'll say well where was this observed to occur in nature now so long as it can actually occur in nature hence me using lightning as an example then you're perfectly within scientific realms to to study it you don't have to actually go out and see it occurring in nature as long as it does occur in nature but that isn't the case in terms of the scientific discoveries that have occurred with light and every time the subject comes up and this is you know, the, the sort of nail-biting stuff that you get to when, you know, I don't know, a couple of three hours of conversation with Quantum Eraser when you're not on a show with him. Not that I do this very often anymore, but back in the day when I used to, you you get more and more into the conversation and the more you learn, the more you realise people don't know very much about how light works. Yeah, I yeah. wondered Sorry. about the, the, the late choice because um, isn't it claimed... Uh, that D0 gets the light before any other detector? Is it, Can't you use that to kind of measure this? Like, don't they claim a speed to light in that experiment? You've got to use the concept to get to derive the outcome from it, correct? You've got to use a conception to describe what's occurring. That's correct. Now, does it mean that it's dependent on the concept you're using to describe it? No. Quantum eraser and I think Albert Einstein and Veritasium have all been in agreement. I think that I don't think anyone's going to measure the one way speed of light. Now, that doesn't mean it's impossible, but it means it's a bit of a task. So I don't know where else you'd start other than lightning. Why else do you do? You stand with a tape measure and turn on the light really fast. Uh, I'll, start, you know I'll tell you where you've already started. You've sta well, you've already started with the assumption of a journey. To have a speed, it's got to be making a journey, right? Metaphorically, you know, the bus driver's got to put yeah. a cap on, start the engine and drive. Well, however that process takes place, that's a journey. Now, I don't... <laughs> my my conceptions of light being instantaneous is how I perceive things. You know, I don't have to wait for light to get to my eyes as far as I'm concerned. Now, if you can demonstrate otherwise, then fine. And if you want to utilise the delayed choice, it's like, no, that's an aspect of explanation within the delayed choice, the delay you can quantify by describing it with our crude understandings of a concept called time. That isn't the experiment. I don't know. When I flash a, uh, a flashlight on the wall, it immediately appears on the wall. So to me, it's instantaneous. Yeah, but you can't register. Well, I mean, there's a difference between, I think, uh, lightning and, and, like, you know, the light that's scattered... Um, isn't lightning more coherent versus like you know uh, light scattered through the uh, medium being incoherent? Like, would you even would you even be questioning them like the same, or would you have to question it individually? I don't know. We're so far from the distance to the sun at this point, and this is so outside of my realm of expertise. If you can consider me to have one. <laughs> this is probably well, why they uh, said, oh, it's 93, don't worry about it. It's 93 million. It's, it's far enough. <laughs> well, I think if we're going to study the speed, if we were ever going to, uh, back, because it is back, we'll go back to the sun. If we're going to study the distance, oh, uh, sorry, the speed of light, uh, obviously we pre assume it has a speed, but we're going to have to study the human eye because it's how we perceive something. We perceive light, don't we? We can't say that it has a speed. We can say that we perceive it, as opposed to we also perceive dark. So the human eye has to come into it. Remember, think about that before. But, you know, you could be a, 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 on a route to nowhere. <laughs> I don't know. 
I mean, based on double slit, when you say you've got to have a, an I, I say you've got to have a Noah. So when they, um, like for the delayed choice, um, when, when using a convention, I guess you said to describe, am I, am I wrong in saying, well, it's more um, qualitative than quantitative because you see something that you can describe, but it's not like you can time it. All science is going to be that way though, isn't it? You yep. can just, if you just focus on the quantity always, you might have the cause wrong. Here's a question for you. Does the light exist because a blind man can't see it? Or does it cease to exist because a blind man can't see it? From his perception, he it can, ceases to exist. For him, it ceases to exist. <laughs> Wait, but he can see light. That, that's not even true that blind people can't see light. They can tell the difference between a dark room and a room with the light on. Well, it depends on the, depends on the nature of the blindness. If their optic nerve is severed, they can't perceive any light. So it depends on the nature of the blindness, but, you've just, but you've my just, point is, I mean, if it's just a, go ahead. Well, you've answered your own question. Cannot perceive any though. light is the same as light doesn't exist to them. If you can't perceive it, it's not in existence to them. Right, but I'm, I'm actually, well, I'm, the question is broader than that though. Just because he can't perceive it, does that mean the light does not exist? Because if I see the light, but he does not see the light, is the light still in existence? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, um, okay. I would, I would say, like, uh, as Eli said there, that there is blind people who are considered blind, but they can still see, they can still perceive the difference between a, a room with a light on or a light off. What is it in their eyes that still allows them to perceive that? The that eyes are the not the only organs that perceive light. That's not his point. It, that's not his, that's, that's not, not what he's driving at. This is, you know non sequitur to his point yeah uh, yeah well, well, well my point is is that if a, a, a blind if someone who's considered blind because i know my old father was considered blind um before he passed away and he only had one eye and his optic nerve to that eye was damaged he lost the other eye in a hunting accident uh so it, it, he was considered blind uh but his optic nerve uh, did, like when it was really bad, it kind of improved actually, but when it was really bad, everything just seemed shaded to him. Everything was like dark. Every day was a dark day, but he still could perceive the difference between dark and light. So, you know, what, what, if besides someone who has damage to an optic nerve, what is it that allows them to, um, or a severed optic nerve, what is that allows them to still see that in their light? Is it just the same thing as we do? It's just we have a, Obviously, we, have, we, we can see a better concentration of it. I don't know. There was a story, and I, I'd have to go find it out. It was years and years and years and years ago. So I'd, I'd have to go see if it even exists still. But of a man who lost his eye completely, but could still read. I don't know if anybody's ever heard that story, but I remember it from years and years ago. So if you want me to quote it, trying to find the video, it might probably be a, a long time trying to find it, but I do remember a story. Now, if that's the case, if the guy can see without an eye, what does that say? I, d I don't know. It doesn't, it, it doesn't help us with the distance to the sun. I've been banned from talking about eye, so I can't tell. Uh, immediately after you asked that question, I said no. <laughs> we could have moved on, but I mean, here we are. Shout out to Bobby Zines. It says, love the show. Keep on trashing that sphere, Nathan, and the panel. Greetings from Wiltshire. Oh, thank you very much indeed, Bobby Zines. Really appreciate the support. Greetings. Hello. Maybe we need to. So definitely can't be a, a ball of gas in a vacuum. Any evidence that you can have gas pressure without the necessary antecedent of a container to press upon? No. No. So you can't have gas pressure without a container. These gas particles have, have weight. Gas. Weight is down. No, 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 guys. It's how can you have pressurized gas without a container? You can't That's have it. you can't have pressurized gas without a container. Oh, so that doesn't help then. Oh shit. I, I keep hearing about this these gas particles that keep putting on weight. 
I keep hearing this all the time on Discord. What, gas go down, go boom, boom. Me, gas go down, go boom, boom. With weight. So you, you qualify it with pressure because its weight is its downward vector. When they say weight, they mean gravity, which would assert that gas goes down, go boom, boom, like bouncy balls poured into a fish tank. And gas doesn't behave in that way. Gas expands in all directions to fill the availability of volume it has to fill. Yeah. Oh, no, no. The, the, the rebellious gas particles have won the war on entropy, right? So now they just feast, and now they get fat, and now they have weight. There you go. Okay, so according to the... What are we going to call this narrative? I don't know. I started it out with the rebellious gas particles, but I guess we could uh, we still, um, <laughs> call it something else. No, no, that's the working title. The, rebe the rebellious gas, gas particle is, is, as Chocolate describes, the story of the very first gas particle that was released from planet Earth. And as you can see on screen here with this depiction, Star Wars-esque, which is quite appropriate for this particular analogy or comparison or whatever you very want to call appropriate. it. Very appropriate. So imagine that instead of there being clouds, this is just the very early, early fledgling Earth. And the very first gas particle emerges from the rocks and flies out like gas does at high velocity and gets to about here and goes, you know what? This whole entropic law nonsense, I'm not going to abide by it. I rebel. I will cast off my bra in rebellion of gas law. And I'm going to stay right here. I will call this line Carmen and we will stay here and feast. Now, after a time, other particles get up to this point and they're going, woohoo, traveling really fast. But then they see this other particle and go, ho, 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 what are you doing here? It's the law. You've got to keep going at high velocity until you bounce into something. And this rebellious gas particle goes, nah, <laughs> not at all. I'm not having that. Yeah. <laughs> gas law. I defy gas law. I'm going to stay here. Whoa. I'm eating cake. I've burnt my bra and I'm staying here. Want to stay with me? And this other gas particle goes, yeah, you know what? We could commu we could make a little community here. And they go, yeah, right. Let's all eat cake. So they do. And eventually they get fat and fall down, go boom, boom. The end. <laughs> so, you know how they... Walk out wrong, Leonid. Walk out wrong. Hold on. There's a lot of murmurings. Yeah, who, who, Hold on, we'll have Discord first. Sorry, whoever wanted to go from G+. Okay. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, uh, well, the way they rebut this is they say, look at the gas pressure gradient, right? That's that's evidence that uh, gas doesn't uh, uniformly move in all directions. Uh, it stays in density layers. I mean, the the higher density not, doesn't move correct. from... Hold on. From don't, high to low. That's what they say. It doesn't. Right? That's not correct. That's incorrect. It doesn't do that. There's a bigger concentration of it due to the cycles of gas at the ground level. There's no density layers. That's that's a made up. There's no evidence. There's absolutely nothing there for that. That doesn't happen. There's a, there's a, a lessing of it as you, as you rise, and it's all due to temperature. Temperature is the only thing that can manipulate gas inside of a solid container. Brian getting all serious answering. Right. <laughs> <laughs> with, with that, with the analogy in mind, right, so we, what we've done in the rebellious gas particle narrative is created a situation where gas can develop. Because if you take the same story, let's forget the farce of the rebellious gas particles in defiance of natural law, right? The gas comes out, and it goes into space. Then some more gas comes out, and it goes out into space. It just comes out, and travels in whatever vector it's got until it collides with something. That's what it does. Now, let's say for the sake of argument that one comes out down here and hits the Death Star. Now, that might bounce back towards Earth. It might. Let's say it does. You know what it does when it hits it? it bounces straight back off again and carries on in whatever direction it's going, in this case, into space. That's what gas does. So within that narrative, unless I give you the <laughs> rebellious gas particle scenario how do you develop the gas pressure in the first place well in the early earth days uh earth did have a container and then we lost it when the moon crashed and <laughs> what we did have a container did you just make this up yeah. on the spot <laughs> <laughs> yep
Yet Earth's never claimed to have any containment. We a, Doesn't have, never has we had. Were, we were in a little Earth embryo. Aww. Aww. <laughs> right, the bottom line is... I've they... been told that gas particles need energy in order to move at all. Yeah, that's true. But let's just address that guy's point, which is to say our opponents will immediately appeal to there already being gas pressure here and how that gas pressure that's already in existence in their argument behaves with gradients. So they say, how do you have an ask us burden of proof reversal fallacy gas pressure gradients on a flat plane just for the sake of this simplistic argument I'm making here? So they're asking us how we have gradients and dynamic systems. You go, what? Within the gas that we've managed to achieve in a vacuum... So in this picture, all of this high-pressure gas, right, if we look at this cloud right on the edge here, that is right next to a vacuum. This black bit's vacuum, according to heliocentrism. That's your sky. So your sky is this black vacuum here, right next to high-pressure gas. So they say, well, no, it just dissipates slowly into nothing. Like, no, it would all dissipate into the sky vacuum. You'd never have this scenario. You can't have a marble with high-pressure gas stuck to it like it's Velcroed on, next to a vacuum. It doesn't work. So when they appeal to gas pressure gradients, it's the appeal to, well, we've got gas pressure anyway. I'm not going to explain how we achieved it without containment. I'm just going to ask you how a dynamic system works under the assumption we've already got gas pressure here. It's like, no, no, no. Our question is how you get the gas pressure in the first place, not if we assume we've got gas pressure in the first place, how do we have dynamic systems? which is how they reinterpret the question and ask it to us. Yeah, the, the way that this uh, uh, conversation typically devolves, it's too cumbersome for me. It always has been, you know, the gradient this and oh my God, no, that's uh, Delta, how did, you know, blah, blah, blah. I just ask, I just do this. And if they don't get it, I'm like, have your Velcro air ball space, have it. So. Okay, um, why does a balloon seem to lose? Well, what, what happens to a balloon after a while? They'll say, well, oh, it loses the air. And I'll go, oh, so it's not because the air inside it is compressed or contracting in on itself or, or attracted in any way then. All righty then. That's the way I deal with this stuff. Yeah, gas doesn't go well, down. That's the bottom line. It expands in all directions. So in order for them to have this heliocentric version of a world with gas pressure stuck to it, they have to have gas going down to the centre of mass one with gravity. So gas is being pulled down. Well, gas doesn't get pulled down. That's not how it behaves. End of story. No sky vacuum. Space debunked. Go ahead, whoever it was. Well, I was well informed. yeah, the... Uh... Who's okay. going there first? Who Go on, the Brian. Okay. I'm going to say you. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, the, the, the problem is, is they start claiming that, besides them this starting from a delta X argument, but them already having gas pressure, they claim that the, that the weight of the atmosphere uh, is being pulled down by a force of gravity. Right now, I'm just going to pull a few of these things apart force of gravity thrown out the window in 1915 by Einstein doesn't exist according to mainstream science. But they're still asserting it, right? The weight of the supposed atmosphere, right? The atmosphere is, as we know, is, a, is an oxymoron. You can't have sphere shaped air without a container. Now, the weight part, right, comes from them claiming that the their atmosphere, right, uh, has ma what they call mass. Right? Mass, right, in physics only means inertia. Gas is independent, independent, let's say, little molecules or whatever, atoms. They're independent of each other. They move around independently. They are unbonded, unattached to each other. They, the only thing that changes that is temperature, right? They can be phase changed back to being a liquid or whatever. But gas, as a gas, moves around independently. Right. All these tiny little things do their own thing. They're not attached to any of the other tiny little things. They just bounce around all over the place. Now, they constantly, constantly move. 
So how could they, how could any one of those, well, for a start, you can't treat them all as a unit because they're not a unit, they're independent, number one. And number two, how do any one of them, how could any one of them be considered mass because they, they're not exhibiting any inertia? Quite the opposite from that, are they not? So their, their term for mass, which is only just a description, that's all the word mass is, just a description, it doesn't mean anything. You know, it just describes inertia. What, what inertia are, are they exhibiting? You know, so the, the whole, like, all you have to go back to what, the, in physics, what these things are, what they're agreed to be, you know, and it's just like, how does that work with your force of gravity that was thrown out in 1950? Indeed. Sorry, I killed the party. If they don't have a force, and this is something that Sleeping Mario is currently in the chat. I was going to say barks on about, but that would be a bit demeaning to say that. But something that he focuses on, which is to say that as much as we can say they don't have a force anymore, it's out of date by 106 years, and then show them citations that make it absolutely clear, cite Professor Brian Cox or George Musa or whoever else is making it explicitly clear that gravity is not a force, it doesn't change the fact that the anti-flat earthers a sleepy Mori, it's nice that we can now categorise the reason and whys and wherefores of why this argument still held up. 106 years, stinking like old fish. <laughs> well, it's because the anti-flat earthers need a force to hold gas pressure here, because it stands in violation of the second law of thermodynamics. It's not experiencing an entropy increase. Well, that's what gas does. So, yeah, it would experience an entropy increase. The gas would fill the space. Space is fake. What's that you say? Oh, there's a force that holds it. No, there isn't. It's not how gas behaves. But what's that? You say 106 years ago they said there was a force, so that's still going to hold gas here in homogeneous layers with the weight pulling it down. No, no, no. No, we don't have homogeneous layers of gas <laughs> pushing down. Can I read a funny comment that I just came across in uh, the chat? Damn, I lost it. You can, but just, I'll just read Sleeping Warrior's comment before you do. He says, no, no, Nathan Oakley, I defo don't bark on about this. It's the biggest argument, in my honest opinion. Barking is fine by me. <laughs> don't worry, Sleeping Warrior. You can hound it all you want. So, a uh, comment by the Akumu Virus. Uh, most gas law presupposes a container. Pressure is caused by the constraints of the container. The atmosphere uses weight to cause pressure, not a container sleeping. Uses weight? Well, what uses down vectors at 9.8 meters per second per second as per your gravity, a virus? No, gas does not go down, go boom, boom. Weight is down. No, it does if you put it in a container. But ultimately speaking, gas expands in all directions. It does not go down, go boom, boom, with your weight claim. Yeah, but... but right before that, he says pressure is caused by the constraints of the container. Uh, yeah. What container? What, no, he's, <laughs> claiming, he's claiming it's a presupposition. He's saying all the citations just presuppose you're going to have a containment. I mean, obviously, the V in PV equals NRT is just a presupposition. No, it's not. It's an antecedent to have the pressure. Without the container, there can be no pressure. End quote. Conspiracy cats. You've got to have something to contain the gas. Otherwise, it's not contained. It'll just escape. Now, that well, escape... Oh, hold, on, hold on. That escape is the description in entropy. Yeah, it filling the availability of volume. In other words, if you've got a container with a hole in it, then the availability of volume is the container that it's within and also whatever's outside of it, because there's a hole. So the gas can follow its way through the hole into the rest of the volume it has available to it. So therefore, when you're calculating volume, it's not like, oh, well, we'll calculate this pipe and ignore it's got a hole in it. No, the accessible volume is everything outside of the pipe because it's not contained within the pipe. It's just that simple. That description, by the way, is the process of entropy. That's the second law of thermodynamics. 
and it's defied by have... having a sky vacuum. Right? Why am I getting the point rumpest? That's the point, right? As everyone's desperate to jump all over it. Right, this entropic law is gas behaviour, gas filling space in line with entropy. An entropy increase would be filling the space. Now, that means we don't have space for gas to fill because it would fill it. This is the space they say your sky is, the sky vacuum. It isn't. I'm done. There you go. Chocolate, read that again, please, from Virus. Uh, I have to go up and find it. Give me a sec. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what the hell is this? All right, got it. Okay, it says most gas law, most gas laws presupposes a container. Pressure is caused by the constraints of the container. The atmosphere uses weight to cause pressure, not a container of sleep. So he's referencing gas laws as presupposing something? Could that be used on another topic? First of all, what's an atmosphere? Hold on, hold Hang on. on. So, Byers, why don't you come on the show? Because this is interesting. You, you, you're you saying that gas laws, laws, work on the presupposition. Is that what you're saying? No. He's projecting his own presupposition of sphere-shaped air with weight, gas go down, go boom, boom, and saying the laws of gas that apply them to volumes, rightly so, because that's how gas behaves, is actually just a presupposition. And my station stating sphere-shaped air by presupposing atmosphere, I'm not going to mention that that's a presuppositional statement that begs the question that air, which absolutely does not take the shape of a sphere and absolutely does take the shape of its containment, he's saying that the fact that it takes the shape of its containment is a presupposition as opposed to an antecedent. Well, that's my I'm not, I'm not What's sure. atmosphere? I'm not sure about that. I'd like for him to tell me what he meant by it, but I appreciate the clarity. Well, I would attack it a little bit different, right? Because the word weight would be where I would go with it, because the weight he's talking about is caused by mass times acceleration, right? So mass, as I said earlier, gas, atoms or molecules, whatever, particles, people want to call them for different reasons. They are, they are termed different for different reasons. They move about independently, right, of each other. They don't exhibit any inertia whatsoever, right? So they don't resist acceleration. They are always moving at acceleration. They're not resisting anything. The only thing that stops them is when they bounce off of something, the, the container wall, or each other. That's what gas does, or something, something solid, wherever they can bounce off. So how can these singular gas atoms, right? We call them atoms for the sake of uh, conven convention. How can they exhibit inertia? Because mass is inertia. For something to have weight in their paradigm, then inertia times acceleration. That's what it is. And what's inertia? It's a description. That's all it is. So it's a description times acceleration. Acceleration, another description. So it's description times description. Or if you want to say mass attracts mass, it's a description, which is all mass is. Description attracts description. That's what they're talking about. It's complete and utter nonsense. Yeah, they're working outside of the convention. But with that, I am going to say, if you are watching this on either Nathan Oakley 1980 or Nathan Oakley Primary Streams, stay tuned, as there will be an after show to follow. Unfortunately, though, if you are watching live, this is where we bid you farewell. So a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who smashed the super chat, liked, commented, shared, subscribed, hit the PayPal link, and all that good stuff. I've been Nathan Oakley. Stay tuned if you're watching on a Primary Stream, and I will see you all in the next video.
Oh, what a day. What a lovely day. Uh, yes, uh, that's where I'll stop. Uh, I don't want to put the burp in the conversation. <laughs> Yeah, Virus, come on the show because I want to know what you meant by that. He's here, he'll probably tell you. Me. Don't rumpus yeah, him. Yeah, because I'm not rumpusing him. I'm asking him. Yeah, I'm here now. Hold on. Give me a second. I'm about to step outside. Give me like awesome. one minute. No worries. Chocolate, have it, have it ready to read again, if you would. Uh, that's the chat. And the show's not live, so I, I can't go back to it. I didn't screenshot it. So. But yeah. Let his dumbass read it. I have to it say, was, in fairness, I was a time when that was his uh, favorite. You know that, right? Virus used to be Nathan's uh, little pet. Played favoritism oh, with, we go. with him. I was just going to say, at least Akin Boris comes on. He does come on. Every so often he will come in. So, you know, and there's a good few of us and I one of him. So, I, I, he might talk a lot of rubbish as far as I'm concerned. But at least he's willing to turn <laughs> up. Indeed. <laughs> all right, what do you want to ask me? Okay, I'll just read out your quote so we're all on track. Most gas laws presupposes a container. Full stop. Pressure is caused by... Yeah constraints of the container the atmosphere uses weight to cause pressure not a container and then you're addressing that to anthony that's it yeah yeah that sounds right to me what's the question the, the question is you said the first one most gas laws assume a container where, where, where are those citations from, and who said it? And why well, I could laws? probably go find it if you actually want me to, but it was mainly about the, if you look in the gas laws, they all basically pretty much assume there's a container. We know that a container is not the only way to cause pressure, so. Why, so why would why would the gas laws right, stop, stop. Uh, that are hold written? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, that's hold on, stop. why are we accepting that? Show me gas pressure without a container then. First of all, you have to get into space first because you need something big enough. Sorry, get into space? I can show you a sorry, fluid sorry, without sorry, a Sorry, container. sorry, sorry, sorry. None of us are going to space. It's fake, right? You're not going to space. I'm not going to space. That's the presupposition you're trying to prove. So don't just beg the question of a sky vacuum. That's the thing you're here to prove. Say, well, you've got to go to my Narnia. So if you start asking me questions about how oh, I believe the place is Narnia, and I say, well, you've got to go to Narnia first... Right, that's an outrage. Don't just demand we accept your presupposition of a sky vacuum to prove your presupposition of a sky vacuum. The question is, you say there's plenty of ways to show that you can have gas pressure without a container. Show us one. Don't presuppose space that we can't go to. Well, the the point of the gas pressure without a container, if I was not sure, was it going to be to prove space? But, I mean, you can look in the space and see this for yourself. Sorry, but did I not I just tell you don't presuppose space. space as an answer? That's what you're here to prove. So Do I need to say it a second time? You've so just done it again. Are you deaf, dumb, or stupid? So what do you got to do to prove space? What do we do? We don't. You have got a sky vacuum, right? That stands directly in violation of natural law. You can't have gas pressure without a container. It's part of all the gas laws, as you well know. Now, you're saying... That's a presupposition. It isn't. It's an antecedent. It's required in order to achieve the gas pressure. Now, if you want to disagree with that and say, no, that simply isn't the case, that's presuppositional, well, you have to prove that's the case. All right. All you need to do is show us gas pressure without a container. Don't beg the question of the very thing you're trying to prove, which is a sky vacuum, because we're not going to that presupposition that you're trying to prove here that stands in violation of natural law. That's the point. 
Don't appeal to a natural law mm -hmm. violation to prove a natural law violation, please. Third time. But that's not what I'm trying to prove. Space is not what I'm trying to prove. Oh, right. Yeah, well, that's part of the heliocentric model, a sky vacuum, 10 to the minus 17 tor, with everything that exists in the entirety of existence being in. So, all right, what are you here to do then? Uh, gas Space pressure is not what you're trying to prove, but we just asked you to prove your claim and you said you'd have to go to space to do that. Exactly, back to the thing. Demonstrate gas pressure without a container. That's all, end of story. Yeah, if I'm trying to prove gas pressure without a container, that's that. I'm not trying to prove space with that. I'm just trying to prove gas pressure without a container. Yeah, no, it will. But that's precisely what it'll words. do. No, that, that's what it will do. Your claim is that we can have gas pressure without containment. That's what the heliocentric philosophy suggests. Now, you think you live in that world. Well, therefore, you've got to justify your heliocentric philosophy assertion that you can have gas pressure without a container. Again, we don't want you to just appeal to what the philosophy says the sky is. That's a sky vacuum, because that's directly contrasting how gas law dictates gas will behave. Entropy is a law of nature. Gas does fill whatever volume it's got to fill. That is a fact. Now, if you say, no, that V volume, yeah, that's not meaning it needs containment. Oh, right. Well, beyond your presuppositional argument that we've got a sky vacuum that we're going to assume anyway, how do you have gas pressure without a container? Can you show it? Show us that. The answer is no. You only can appeal to your sky vacuum. Is a container the only way for gas to have pressure? Well, to have a force? Yeah, no, no. To have gas pressure, the necessary antecedent, not presupposition, is a container. You must have containment to achieve gas pressure. Yes, you must have one. So, so you must have containment for gas to have a force. Force of pressure? Yeah. For it to press on something? Or, I mean, pressure is force. Right, so why are you changing the word? Any particular reason? Because Who cares? Because pressure is force. That's nice. You can't have that force or pressure without containment, and your heliocentric philosophy has got gas pressure not expanding into space. The word force is not in the idea of gas law. How, how do the gas so, laws become so yeah, so gas yeah, I laws? honestly believe that a gas can't have a force without a pressure, without a container. So are you dumb, deaf, or stupid? You can't have gas pressure without a container. That is a fact. Now, if you say, no, nah, it's not an antecedent, you're just presupposing it. Because we can have gas pressure without containment. You better damn well show it beyond your fundy belief that the sky is a vacuum. Well, I, I accept yes. force. Um, show me how gas force doesn't force its way out into a vacuum. Ask that again. How does force, force? How does gas make its show, way out into a vacuum? Gas force, show me how gas force wouldn't go into a less force area. Only if it doesn't have the kinetic energy to do so. If it doesn't have kinetic oh. energy. It does. It's gas. Do you not understand what gas is? You think it's got no kinetic yeah, energy? I don't oh, at this point, you're just stupid. You don't understand what gas is. You're telling me gas has no kinetic energy? Are you retarded? I didn't say it didn't have kinetic energy. So you said it doesn't have enough kinetic energy? Yeah, not having enough... Sorry, having any will mean it's moving. It mean uh, sorry, it having any, any, you stupid, dumb idiot. Will Nathan, mean stop. Stop talking through me, virus. Having any will mean it's going to be moving and it will never reach absolute zero, ever. So it's always moving. It's not stopping and then falling back down again. That's not what a gas does. So when you talk about its kinetic energy, what the bloody hell are you babbling about? Hasn't got enough of it. If it's got any, it's going to be moving into space. It's not going to change its vector unless it collides with something. So no, that was a stupid thing to say. Yeah, all gas doesn't move at the same speed, and they all... Who gives a shit? 
Oh, no, I'm so close. I mean, it's pretty... So it's going to move at a speed, and they're different speeds that it fills the volume, then. This non-sequitur fallacy is going to get you around the fact that you haven't got a container around Earth, and it's got a massive amount of space for these gases to fill at different speeds. Oh, wow, that's fascinating. Yeah, so the gas would fill the volume at a different rate for different gases. How very, very interesting. We'd all still be dead, though. Not, not necessarily, because remember what I stated in my statement about the atmosphere using weight to con to make pressure. Yeah. No, we don't have an atmosphere. Sphere shaped air. What are you babbling about? Gas has weight. That's what I'm. Sorry, sphere shaped gas. Gas has weight. Sorry, sphere shaped gas. gas. You're just going to ignore my objection sixteen times and tell me that it's got weight, which is gravity for you. Gas go down, go boom, boom. We're going to get past the sphere-shaped air bit first, mate. Regardless, has I mean, it has weight regardless of where it comes from. It, Sorry, sphere-shaped air. You You're just going to ignore me. That's the fifth time. I thought you said gas takes the shape of this container. No, you said air takes the shape of a sphere. No. Air, what are you talking through me? So you finally address me and then you're going to talk straight through me. You're losing badly, virus. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are going to talk straight through me. Fundy muting begins. This is where we can yeah, yeah. it. Okay, I'll try again. Who is there? Sorry, shut up, you dumb idiot. Stop laughing. We know that fundy muting's commenced. Now I'm trying to rein you back in, you stupid idiot. I was laughing at something. That means shut up! <laughs> you know what I understand? English suddenly not your first language. Shut up. Sphere-shaped air is what you declared by presuppositional atmosphere. Air doesn't take the shape of a sphere. It takes the shape of its containment. I'm asking why you've assumed air that you're going to go on to say after being sphere-shaped without containment suddenly has weight, go down, go boom, boom. First, we're going to address why you think air is suddenly arbitrarily sphere-shaped. It isn't. Builds the shape of its container. Air takes the shape of its container. Like you said. So what containers making the air around Earth stay in the shape of a sphere, then? It's atmospheric pressure. Sorry, what containers making it atmospheric? Because you're just assuming that it's in the shape of a sphere again without addressing the fact that you just stated clearly that it's going to take the shape of its container. And you haven't got a sphere-shaped container around Earth. You cut me off and let, didn't let me finish. You said... Yeah, I removed your head! You haven't got sphere-shaped air. Yeah. Maybe you let me finish, Nate. What? If you'd have finished, you'd have got around the fact that air doesn't take the shape of a sphere. No. So what's actually happened, virus, you stupid mong, is you had your head removed. Air isn't sphere-shaped. But it takes the shape of this container. So we'd need a container then. Bye-bye, Sky Vacuum. You'd need a container. So atmosphere, assuming the air just is in a sphere shape, without containment, is a total nonsense, according to virus, because it would be taking the shape of its... What now? Container virus? Yeah, that's right, mate. That's our argument. Yeah. Look... Yeah, yeah. So I've removed your head. Now sit down and shut up. Your nonsense assertion to Anthony that most gas laws presuppose a container. Well, you just did exactly that now, didn't you? Well, let me... Most gas laws and virus assume a container. You're not going to let me finish? Uh, you've just assumed a container by statement to me that you're going to need a container for the shape of the gas. So when you told Anthony in the chat that most gas laws have a presuppositional container... No, no, no. Antecedent, like you've just explained to me, needed for a shape to be taken. No, 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 no. You let uh, me finish, Nathan. Oh, right. And if I'd have let you finish instead of you fundy muting the crap out of the conclusion, you'd have got around the fact that you've already told us you need containment. No. But if you wouldn't have fundy muted... Oh, it's just me fundy muting you with a conclusion that rips your head off. <laughs> if you stop fundy muting my answer, then you would get the whole thing instead of just pieces of it, like you're getting. So are you going to let me finish? You said air takes the shape of this container. No, that's what. If you use that's a what's required. It's an antecedent. I if said it's an antecedent as opposed to a presupposition.
if you use a barometer, a barometer uses the for the air that is on the... Sorry, it's already in existence. So we've already got gas pressure in existence and you're going to be measuring the gas pressure from within the gas pressure that we've already got in existence. How did we achieve the gas pressure to measure it with a barometer without containment? Why ask me if you're not... Sorry, why are you ignoring the fact that you're now taking Delta X and presupposing that we've got gas pressure without containment in sphere shape? There, I might add. And asking me how inside the already existing pressure we can measure it. Well, how does that get around the fact that you'd need containment to have this scenario so you can measure it with a barometer? That doesn't address it. Just takes us on to us already having gas pressure without you addressing the fact that your sphere Earth doesn't have any containment, even though you've already admitted you need it. But I wasn't going to say that, but... Yeah, you've asked me about how a barometer works in existing gas pressure. So you're asking me about the existing gas pressure. How did you achieve the gas pressure without containment? I wasn't asking you how a barometer worked. So when you started asking me about barometers and how they work in existing gas pressure, you weren't asking me about that then? <laughs> no, I wasn't asking you anything about a barometer. So when you said the word barometer... Yeah, I was mentioning well, I something. I wasn't asking you something. So, something that measures existing gas pressure, which would require containment. So we still, regardless of your nonsense that you were going to babble on about with the barometer, that wasn't going to result in a question, mm -hmm. was just some nonsense. What was that, that tool yeah, was... measures existing gas pressure. We say you wouldn't have it without containment, so who gives a crap? Yeah, gas pressure requires a container, but measuring I'm gas sorry. pressure requires a container too. <laughs> A barometer is a container. Everything related yeah, to gas which, pressure which requires pressure a container. Does it, what pressure does it measure, the outside or the inside of the container? Uh, the pressure that would require containment that you don't have in a heliocentric model. So it wouldn't be measuring so anything. If this guy, maybe, Fundy, mute me. Maybe it's only if I could get to the end of your answer that you're interrupting the conclusion of again. Maybe you want to project that onto me, Virus, straight away. Go on. Tell me it's only because you couldn't get to your answer that presupposes gas pressure being in existence and doesn't it in any way address the fact that you're all wandering around without a head because you need containment to have this example so is, does that measure pressure on the inside or the outside of the container Oh, it'd definitely be the inside of the containment that you haven't got in the heliocentric model. Doesn't address the fact that you haven't no, got any no. containment and you do have a sky vacuum. And pointing it out again will definitely result in you talking through the middle of this because it's so very painful for you. You addressing the delta X of how we can measure pressure once it exists, but just not mentioning the fact that once it exists would require containment. So this is benign. It's nonsense. It's delta X that you're asking about. Doesn't address how you get X. That's gas pressure without containment given that you've got a sky vacuum. I mean, 25 renditions of the same crap and you muting the crap out of me, projecting it back onto me like you somehow had a good argument that was being interrupted. No, you just asked us about a barometer that works in existing gas pressure. Did you really think that you somehow had a defensible position when you started interrupting me? Because I had a really good conclusion, you fucked hard. You had absolute garbage questions about a barometer, which requires existing gas pressure, which requires the antecedent of containment which you still haven't addressed. So, despite your bleatings about being unfairly treated, you complete utter fuckwit. Yeah, you bloody martyr. You had absolute garbage. So you weren't being prevented from presenting your barometer claim that requires existing gas pressure. You're just a dick. Uh, you just told me that a barometer measures the inside of the container, which is... So where'd you get the containment from, then? For the heliocentric model? Yeah, that's right. You're measuring inside a container. You must have one to have gas pressure. Where's yours? Inside a container. Where's yours? The outside Where's yours? The container. Where's your container around Earth to have gas pressure? Where is it? You, let me... Let me... Let me... Finish. Let me stutter! Because I'm running around without a fucking head. You haven't got a container around Earth, therefore we'd all be dead. Earth as a sphere, with a sky for a vacuum, is not real. Hey, Nathan, let me... Yes, stir for me, bitch. The barometer measures... Yeah, the barometer's measuring gas pressure that would have to have containment for it to be measured. You going to address that, you fundy little bitch? Containment in order for you to... Yes, a containment's needed then. <laughs> yeah, we need containment, that's right. Well. Yeah, yeah, containment. Where'd you get it? Earth doesn't have any of that in a sphere sky vacuum I... scenario. You know, I just, I just answered that, right? You're just, just stuttering like a little bitch. 
How do you get the containment to give you the gas pressure to measure with a barometer? I just answered your question. Oh, really? Well, my God, it was a really great answer. We're all going to pack up and go home, lads. He already answered, right? It's going to be like... A well, what was the answer? My, what was the answer? You didn't have one. You, you haven't addressed the fact that you can't have gas pressure without a container and the heliocentric model has Earth as a sphere with high pressure gas not filling a sky vacuum. That's the second law of thermodynamics violation. You don't have any address for that. Asking me what you said you addressed it with when you haven't is really stupid. Yeah, so and it's a and a waste of time. Why don't you just repeat your answer then? Because he's not listening to me. He's not letting me finish. If he would have let me finish the first time, yeah, I would have heard it. Hey. Make it absolutely clear that I am 100% focused on every single word that Virus now says. Oh, now you're focused. So, now can you answer me? So when a barometer measures gas pressure, does it measure the outside or the inside of the container? Already been covered. Are you fucking stupid? Did you not listen to me? Are you projecting the fact you didn't listen to my answer? Because I listened to that and answered it. You stupid idiot. I'm giving you a... You stupid idiot. So you lied when you said I didn't listen to something because I've listened and answered and responded to this shit already. So you're just a fucking liar. Don't lie. I have listened. Don't bleat your bloody martyr and lie about what you haven't been listened to on, especially when you've had a response and you've even contrasted the response already. So, you stupid liar, why are you here? Then why did I just... Why are you here? Are you deaf to lie? Me neither. Don't mumble. Why, why are you here? Me You're me just me. here to lie. What did I lie about, Nathan? You said that you hadn't had your stuff addressed, that you were interrupted and you didn't have your questions asked, and if we would only listened, we'd have got the full explanation from you. And the only reason it wasn't being accepted was because it wasn't listened to, and that I don't listen. You then got a full-on, lengthy bullshit about how you hadn't been listened to, with nobody else interrupting, every line closed. You then, after a short pause, repeated what you'd already said and had addressed. So after a lengthy silence and all the time you needed, all you did was repeat the same thing. So you're a liar. No, you do understand that you... Don't shout at me about what I understand. I understand that I've already heard your claim and addressed it. You told me I hadn't and my audience by way of a lie. Then you asked me what you lied about. I've now told you what you've lied about. You said you weren't listened to. It was addressed and you even rebutted my address to it. Liar. Definitely Virus, you're a liar. I mean, you're just... You're going to apologise to my audience? What a scumbag. So you've lied about what you have and haven't had listened to, what have and haven't had addressed, and you've then just scummy, fundy muted it the whole time. You're a complete scumbag. And he is actually good at timing it so where as soon as I stop talking, he will stop talking. Oh, really? This is my fault? I mean, really, Virus's repetition of the same thing he'd had addressed when he told my audience that I haven't been listening, I hadn't been addressing his points that were really good. So when he had all the time in the world, second time I'm saying this, he repeated the same thing again. I'm now calling him out as being a liar because that isn't something that wasn't listened to. You're a liar. So barometer inside the containment, yeah, so you're definitely going to need containment. That's where we got to. You said you haven't been listened to and repeated the same thing, having lied. Is that not clear? No, you have not repeated what I said. So when I trim it out with the same exact thing being repeated with a long pause before it and you bleating about I haven't been listened to, that isn't a repetition of the same thing that I addressed when I said inside the container as a direct answer to that which you repeated and are now lying about repeating... So, second lie, he's now lying about repeating it. Okay, Nathan, you could... Yeah, not okay, you scumbag, fundy liar. It's all you guys do. Just come, get caught out, have your head removed. You don't like it as you run around stuttering, not realising potentially that your head's on the floor. And then you lie.
Oh, well, I didn't repeat the same claim after having lied and said that you didn't listen to me. I didn't do that. That's exactly what you did, you liar. You guys are pathetic, man. man. White noise privilege. We know it all sounds different on the other side of the YouTube than it does on Discord, so I'm not worried about you trimming this it This is pathetic, bro. Yeah, dude, it's all about the format. It's not about you not answering the question for an hour straight. Yeah, it's not about that. It's, it's about not, it's, not, a, it's just, not about him you just conceding. Can't do it. It, it, God won't allow him through the technology, through the rhythm of our speaking, for him to be able to answer that question that he can so easily answer right now. Right, Akuma virus? What was, what's How can you have gas pressure without a container? In the picture on screen for my audience, there's yeah. a picture of gas pressure next to a vacuum. Now, that's the second law of thermodynamics violation. And all you seem to do is ask us about how we can measure gas pressure that's already in existence. So it doesn't address the question. Now, I'm going to give you all the time in the world to tell us how you can have gas pressure without a container, without appealing to what you are trying to prove or denying that you're even trying to prove it. That would be a sky vacuum. Don't appeal to your religious belief. Maybe concede, because you haven't managed to prove it. You've just kept on appealing to Delta X. Gas pressure gradients or existing to... gas pressure. If you want to know how we got gas pressure, is wait. That's your answer. Wait. Gas has wait. weight. So gas is going down 9.8 meters per second per second then. Nah, just gas... So no! Wait a minute, Nathan. Can he show us from the beginning of time how gas pressure through weight created our gas pressure? Yeah, the rebellious gas particles, right? They went up to the Kármán line, ate a few donuts, and then gained weight and came back down again, did they? They took themselves so fat that they got to absolute zero. No, what? No! Hold on, you just said weight. The gas comes out of the ground, carries on in whatever vector it's going. It doesn't fall down with weight. Can I ask you a question? Can you ask me something Please. rather than ignore that you've just said it had weight? No, gas comes out of the ground, moves towards the space, and unless it collides with something, it just keeps going. Never reaches absolute zero. Your kinetic argument fell completely short too. So no, it doesn't have weight. What does that have to do with absolute zero? Uh, because you'd need it to get to absolute zero for your kinetic argument that you made earlier that potentially you've now forgotten about to make sense. Where I first started telling you off and explaining that you don't understand how gas behaviour works. You said it didn't have enough kinetic energy. Do you not remember your own stupid arguments? <laughs> Maybe mutter through me while I reassert your argument, which I absolutely listened to and can now paraphrase back to you. But I'll need to be charged with not listening, won't I? As you mutter through every fucking word I say. Just projection. I listen closely to every word you say. You don't listen to a damn thing I say and then claim I'm doing that to you as you mutter non-stop. What does that have to do with absolute zero? Because uh, you can't achieve it for gas to not have enough kinetic energy. That's the third time I've explained your own shit argument back to you. Nothing to do with, that has nothing to do with absolute zero. What? Not having enough kinetic energy? Yeah, that has nothing to do with absolute zero. How, how do you run out of kinetic energy if you're a gas particle then? Fighting weight. Sorry, that's got nothing to do with weight. Sorry, how do you get yes, to... Does. How do I, oh, how, how do you run out of kinetic energy? The answer is you don't know. That's why when this came up last time, I told you you were stupid and you don't understand how gas behaves. Okay. And now you're muttering straight through me again, aren't you? Because you're... Oi, cunt! Muttering straight through the guy that you're going to later claim doesn't listen to you. Yeah, because you so just cunt. Told me my ass. So cunt, yeah. Yeah, when you describe how the kinetic energy will run out, because you're a fucking idiot, I declare that you don't understand how gas behaves. You later go on to say, no, that's justifiable, because I say, wait. Well, weights go down, go boom, boom, 9.8 metres per second squared for you. That's not how gas behaves. And in order for it to run out of the kinetic energy you used in your argument, it would need to reach absolute zero. You don't understand that because you're thick as shit. That has nothing... Shut up, thicko. Shut up. Nothing don't want to hear anything more from you, virus. That's it, you're done here. Shut up. Tired of this. Retards coming here telling us what's what. <laughs> telling me I don't listen. Doing what he's doing now, which is muttering straight through me. Scum, you are thick as shit. Make no mistake about it, virus. You're thick. You're going to come here and tell me what's what when you haven't got the vaguest idea how gas behaves.
Not the slightest idea. But you're going to tell me some rhetoric that's 106 years out of date of weight causing gas to go down, go boom, boom. What are you, Thunderfoot? Could, could I have a go? I'm trying to figure out what they have to do with absolute zero. I told you four times. Now sit down and shut up. If you don't understand, go away. Right? Your comprehension skills aren't good enough to be here, virus. Do you get that? That's why I'm telling you to shut up. Not so I can explain it for a fifth time. May I make a comment? Can I ask him a question, Nathan? Yeah, you can. I'm done with him. Thank you. Uh, virus, could you give me a, a, a brief uh, description of inertia, please? Resistance to motion or resistance to a force, resistance to acceleration, resistance to a change in velocity. The more inert, the more inertia something has, the more it resists a change in velocity. Okay, and uh, would you agree that uh, um, that for something to have weight, it needs to have inertia? Yes. Yes. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so in there, like so, mass is described as inertia, is it not? In physics, you just said that's correct. Yes. Oh, say that again. Mass is described as inertia in physics. Is this not correct? Well. Inertia is a property of mass. They're not really described as the same exact thing. Well, mass is, is defined as inertia in physics. That's the definition of it. In physics, well, it's def in as physics inertia. mass is described as the quantity of inertia. Yeah, but that's what he just said. Inertia. That's what he just said. So you it's agree. Just, okay, let's move on. Yeah, yeah, we move on. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we're not going to stick on that. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so for something to have weight, it needs to have inertia. For something to have weight, in your paradigm, it needs to have mass. Because in your paradigm, weight is caused by mass times acceleration, yes? Yes, that is force, okay. yes. Yeah, mass times acceleration, okay. So, <clears throat> gas particles are independent of each other. Would you agree with that? Okay. Yeah, right. So, and gas particles are constantly in movement in all directions. Would you agree with that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, they are not, um, they're not a whole. They're all independent entities. And they're all constantly accelerating in all directions. So, how can you yeah. describe, no. how can you, hang on, I'm getting to the point. How can you describe gas as having mass? when it has no inertia. Who says they have no inertia? Because it's not resisting anything. It's moving about in all directions. The only thing, that's, the only thing that stops a gas particle is when it bounces off the walls of its container or other solid objects or other gas particles. The only thing that stops it is that. So, it's constantly right. in flux. In all directions. Okay. Gas pressure differential. Can I ask you something? Could you yeah, not, answer, it? Could you not shoot, answer him rather than ask something? Could you not a a answer? Hello? 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 Can I ask something? That's a question. Now you're getting the answer to that question. I'd prefer you answered him. Do you need the question again rather than starting a new question? Because it's maybe you don't understand the question you're being asked. Do you not understand well, the question just, you've been? Do you not understand the Brian, question you've been asked, Virus? Can I can I just talk to Brian? No, you can explain whether or not maybe you can paraphrase the question back to us all, so we all understand that you understand Brian's question. I'm about to ask him about a situation. I don't give a shit what you're going to ask him. Question. I would like you to paraphrase back what he's asking broadly distracting me from the point nathan you're distracting from the me. point that brian's you asking you're not going to answer because you you're going to introduce a new question scumbag 
Brian, no, this if he was doesn't, Brian, uh, stop, stop, oh stop, God. stop, now, uh, stop, now uh, stop. That means stop. If he doesn't answer on this next opportunity, which I'm going to give him, then Brian will move to the conclusion. If he starts asking a question, he'll be immediately cut off. Brian, ask the question again. Okay. <clears throat> Gas particles are independent, so they move about in all directions, in all vectors, at acceleration. They are not resisting acceleration in any way, shape, or form. And the only thing that impedes them is when they bounce off the walls of their, of the contain, of, uh, their container, each other or other objects. So how can gas particles be considered to have inertia and to be considered mass? Where do you, okay, so when you evaporate a liquid, that mass doesn't just disappear. It goes with it, the gas molecules. I mean, it, it continues on. The, gas, the, mo the mass of the liquid doesn't just disappear when it turns into a gas. Please, so I you can know. automatically assume that it definitely does have I mass. That's a fair and you can actually from, weigh from gas bond? as well, too. Wow. Just a fucking stop, one bond. bro. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, but Virus, you're speaking. Of, thank you, Chocolate. But Virus, you're speaking about a phase change from a bonded to an unbonded phase. We're talking about the unbonded gas phase. We're not speaking about yeah, the bonded this, liquid phase. I did mention. Liquid. Yeah, that's still what I'm talking about. You think the mass is something that automatically yeah, disappears but, during the phase change? They don't behave. Liquid and gas don't behave the same. They might both be fluids, but they're both but different in their behavior. But they both still have mass. Where do you think the mass goes to? He's no, asking you, stop, stop, mass. stop, no, stop, no, stop. No, stop. No, Hello? Everyone else in G Plus that's getting irritated, don't. You're just making matters much harder as Virus intentionally tries to frustrate you all by moving the goalposts onto phase change. You've been asked, gas, Virus, gas. What's resisting it? What's resisting gas? Yeah. <laughs> For it to be mean? described as inertia, that's got to have a resistance to it. So what's resisting it? Oh, nothing. What is, what is gas resisting? resisting gas? That's what I mean. What's, what, what do you... I don't understand that question. What's resisting I'll gas? I'll ask the question again, Nathan. Oh, I'll ask the, the question hell? a third time. I'll ask the question a third time, Nathan. Virus. Gas atoms, particles, right, uh, molecules, they are independent of each other. They are unbonded. They move about in all vectors at high speeds. They do not exhibit inertia. They do not, uh, they do not resist acceleration. So how can they be considered mass? Because in your paradigm, you need something to be mass before it can become mass times acceleration, giving it weight. Where's this acceleration coming from? I'm not claiming acceleration. I'm speaking about the claim that gas is has mass. You're saying they don't resist acceleration. What acceleration are you talking about? I didn't. I'm asking. I'm asking about the claim of gas being claimed to have mass, which is then giving it weight in your paradigm. I say it again. In your paradigm, weight is caused by mass times acceleration. That means the antecedent of that is something has to have mass, has to have inertia, has to be considered to have inertia to be resisting acceleration. But gas particles move about in all directions independently and do not in any way, shape, or form, do not resist acceleration. As a matter of fact, it's the quite opposite from that. That's right. Okay. So since you think that gas for some reason doesn't have mass, during the phase change, where does it go? Hang on a, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a sec. Sorry, Arwen, you're not helping me at all. Hang on a second. You're claiming what I think. I'm asking you questions about physics. Right? That that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm asking you about. about. Hang on, that's a bunk you're saying, saying that, that gas has mass. Now, you're not answering my questions. You're switching to something else. You're saying, you, you're saying, or you're believing something. No, I'm asking you, how can gas be considered to have mass when it does not, it does not resist, uh, when it does not resist acceleration in any way? 
because it would have to Listen be an acceleration to be mass in your paradigm, your okay. paradigm. Okay. Listen to what I'm saying. During the phase change, the mass doesn't magically disappear. I don't care it stays about phase change. With I didn't the phase change. If you phase have oxygen and liquid, stop. Stop. Everyone, stop. 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 Everyone, stop. Hello. Hello. That means you included virus. So he's, what he's doing is he's building up a little straw man. He's been asked about how yeah, gas I behaves. Don't. He's building up a little straw man about how phase changes work. So no, you're not addressing the question. You're addressing a new question that hasn't been asked about phase changes. We're not talking about phase changes. We're only describing gas. So you're going to do that four more times? Because if so, that's the end. Brian can move to conclusion. What, what, well, can I just have that bit? What he's trying to do there, just, what, what he's actually doing there is demonstrate that his definition is purely mathematical. And the trouble is, and this is why he's filibustering, is when the mathematics are applied and the definition is applied to gas, it suddenly becomes nonsensical. And that's why he's fluffing around it, because the maths suddenly is no longer applicable to gas behaviour. It, it just highlights just the, the... Sorry, Andrew, just for the no, audience's that, that, benefit, that, that, just for the audience's benefit, every single time that this light with virus's name flashes, just make yourself a mental note, that's when he's not listening, because he's talking straight through what Adam's saying. So every time you see this light flash, that's virus doing precisely what he claimed earlier I was doing, which is not listening not giving the person the opportunity to say what they're saying. It's him muttering and talking straight through the top of him. Just watch this little light when Adam tries again. See how we get on. But the, at the point of phase change, what he's trying to say is that it has mass at this point where it's liquid. But surely then, when it turns into this, it still has the same mass. And my point is, this highlights the absurdity of the maths that he's using to describe to describe reality. Brian's done a great job um, demonstrating the principles of what mathematically defines as mass and it's nonsensical. But when it gets to this point of having to describe mass with regards to gas behaviour, suddenly the, 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 the way in which it's described mathematically becomes exemplified as even more nonsensical and not really based on reality, just based on another description. And that's, that's why he's struggling to get around this, because it requires an admission that the primary definition is nonsensical in the first place. Right, it's liquids and his... Adam, that's exactly... His Sorry. liquids and his solids go down and go boom, boom, but the gases don't. That's exactly my point, what Adam was saying. That's exactly where I'm going. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. Can I make a comment? We're waiting for virus to respond. Why are you waiting for me to respond? It wasn't a question. Come again. Hold on, G plus. Why are you waiting? It wasn't a question. Yeah, it was a statement of how you're utilizing solids and liquids with their behavior when we're asking you about gas. Now, this is your opportunity to redress that. Okay. Do you do you actually think that mass is dependent on the phase of the, the substance? It's not about what I think. I'm asking you questions about gas and how. I, I gas know, I know, but I'm also asking you what mass. you think as well. Yeah, sorry, it's going to demute you. Sorry, sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, Brian. Sorry, sorry. He, sorry, Brian. Sorry. Decided he wasn't going to listen to you. Decided he was going to just talk straight through the middle of you rather than listen to what you're saying. Yeah, thank you, Nathan. Yeah, it's not about what I think. It's, I'm asking you, Virus, I'm asking you a question about your claim that gas has weight. For gas to have weight in your paradigm of force, right, that means the gas has to be has to have mass because your paradigm states that mass times acceleration is it defines the weight or defines weight. So gas has to have mass, but mass is defined as inertia, right? Inertia is a resistance to acceleration, but gas... Gas particles are, or atoms, molecules, are all independent of each other, right? They move about in all vectors at all kinds of high speeds, and they're doing everything but resisting acceleration. They're, absolutely, they're actually doing the opposite from resisting. So how can you claim that gas is mass, or sorry, has mass, 
to give it weight by mass um, times acceleration. Well, I keep telling you how we get to that situation. Mass isn't depending on the phase of the substance. Mass carries on throughout the phases. I'm not understanding how mass will suddenly disappear from liquid to gas or suddenly reappear from gas to liquid. Is mass sticks with it during Sorry. phase change. Okay, so you're saying it has mass. Brian's saying, how can it have mass? when that would be its resistance to acceleration and that's not what it's exhibiting. Therefore, how can you say that given what Brian has explained to you five times with non-stop funding muting and claims that we don't listen to you? Could, could Boyer say uh, that again? Please don't want to interrupt what I just so said Boyer, you that explains how we get that gas has mass. What but, part of that don't y'all understand? Again? When yeah, hold on, everyone be quiet. I'll Boyer. summarize his point for you, Brian. He's saying, doesn't matter if it's solid, liquid, or gas, they all have mass. And you're like, that, yeah, Nathan. we know you claim it's got mass. Brian's saying, but how can you claim it has mass when that would be its resistance to acceleration? That's about seven times. You're just too stupid to get it. Yeah, oh Boyer, would you please, Do you not understand would you please please Yeah, we know. You're just not understanding. I've just said that. Now sit down, shut the fuck up. You're just too stupid. I know you're not understanding this. We know. You're thick. Now shut up. I'm telling you. Shut up. Why not? Shut. Y'all don't understand. Me. Uh, I know you don't understand. We know you're thick as shit. We get it. We know we've had to tell you seven times and ask you seven times. And all you've done is say, well, I say gas has mass. Oh, really? Yeah, we know we're asking you about your claim of it having mass. You're just too stupid to get it. I'm telling you how y'all are actually being too stupid to get virus. it. Virus. Virus. Solids and liquids. Hang on. Virus, hang on. Solids, Aaron, please don't. Solids and liquids have bonded, right, have bonded molecules, bonded atoms, right? They're bonded. Gas is unbonded, right? And those unbonded atoms, particles, molecules, whatever you want to call them, for different reasons they call different things, they move about in all vectors at, 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 at a calculated rate of 700 meters per second, right? In all vectors, not resisting acceleration. So for them to be mass, they need to have inertia because inertia is a resistance to acceleration. But if they're not exhibiting any resistance to acceleration, but actually doing the opposite, then that means they don't have mass. So they don't have a collective weight because they need to have a collective mass and, be, and exhibit inertia as a collective mass to, do, to have weight in your paradigm of mass times acceleration. So your claim of mass times acceleration, right, uh, uh, causing weight and gas having this weight caused by gas having a mass, which is an a resistance, which is an inertia, which is a resistance to acceleration, is debunked. That's fails correct. by the definitions. It fails, virus. Yeah. I think virus is. Yeah, like the top, does atomic numbers like that mean nothing to y'all? You're mistaken. Like, uh, Gas doesn't like have an mass. element it having a atomic Oh, wait, for the love of nothing. Jesus Christ, can you shut up? Okay, I'll just. Virus, are you going to actually address this? It's been addressed to you about six times how, uh, you, how you claim with mass fails. Uh, yeah, my bad. As soon as I'm summarising it, you're talking, aren't you? No, I'm listening to you. Keep going. You failed example, virus. The, uh, so you're telling me that the, element, the periodic table is just completely wrong. Is that what you're telling me? No, we're nobody saying that... says nobody mentioned the periodic table. Sorry, Nathan. Yeah, we're saying that when well, you I'm define it I'm as... Uh, maybe you should keep talking. Maybe just talking one. through the summary will stop you having to address it. Maybe Fundy Muting will commence I from here on in. I was Yeah, Fundy Muting definitely going to commence. So we're saying yeah, you're... Talking. Yeah, yeah, still continuing to Fundy Mute. Maybe later tell me that I don't listen to you. So your claim requires gas to have mass. That's resistance to acceleration. It's not exhibiting that. 
So based on your claim of mass, gas go down, go boom, boom, it failed because it can't be described with its resistance to acceleration. Therefore, your description of it having mass fails. Comprende? Eighth time you've had it explained to you. Yeah, and y'all still don't get it. Where the fuck does the mass go to? Right. I don't give a shit. It's not our claim. Are you so fundamentally fucking retarded that you're going to ask me where the mass you claimed it had went when it fails to make your point work? I couldn't give two shiny shites. Your claim fails, though. Shit for brains. Man. Stupid shit for brains. You're just thick. You think you're going to charge us with asking where your description of mass, resistance to acceleration, goes after it fails to make your point work? Oh, I don't know or care. I know your points failed, though, you stupid idiot. <laughs> that, you claim it doesn't happen. Right. I don't claim anything, <laughs> stupid shit for brains. Don't start telling me what I claim. Yeah, you claim gas go down, go boom, boom, because it's got mass. You are stupid. So does gas have mass or not? You're the one claiming it, you stupid retard. The problem with your claim is it doesn't have any resistance to acceleration. It's inertia by your definition, according to you. You've been taken by the hand by Brian. Lots of fundy muting while it happened. Lots of claims we don't listen to your shitty explanations that come back after a load of fundy muting when you don't listen to us. Your fucking claims failed. How many times? None. Chant that it's got mass. mass. Hold on. Now, let's just predict what's going to happen. He's going to start chanting that gas has mass. Watch. Does gas have mass or not? Told you. We're not making claim about it, you stupid idiot. You're saying it's got mass, therefore go down, go boom, boom. That's your claim. So who cares what we're claiming? It doesn't have resistance to acceleration. So your definition of it fails in your example to have gas go down, go boom, boom to the centre of Earth with a force How? How does it fail? Because it doesn't have resistance to acceleration. That's nine times. Are you dumb? Yes, he is. Very, very stupid. And he's your representative. I heard you're boycotting us here, anti-flat earthers. Ah, well, that's good by me. Because what we're left with is this dumb shit to defend your globe faith. Yeah? More, more of them. Roll on the retards, man. Let virus come and defend your globe. Because <laughs> he's an absolute idiot doesn't understand half the stuff he actually says. Our gas resisting acceleration would be heavier gases that don't move as fast as the higher gases. So I'm not understanding where where it fails. What's resisting it? So why don't, What's why resisting it? Let's see if he listens to a response to that. No, no, constant chatter. What's resisting it? What's resisting what? The gas, you stupid retard! Nothing is resisting the gas. So, so not resisting then. So the description of inertia based on its resistance to it, it's not doing that then. So uh, maybe the penny will drop this time, you stupid idiot. Will it? The gas. So not resisting then. The not resisting then. Not not meeting your criteria and your claim then. No, not penny hasn't dropped yet. Really this stupid? Really this thick? He said heavier <laughs> gases. Now that's straight away and then wait again. Yeah, me. begging the and question. What he's trying to do is go back to, he's trying to bring it back to a phase change situation. Because like some of the, what they call heavier gases, uh, would be closer to a liquid than they would be to some of the other gases. But they're still a gas. They still behave as a gas. They, and if you leave any of them, if I put carbon dioxide into a room I'm in now, and I open all the doors and windows, that's not going to stay down close to the floor. It will when it's first pumped out of whatever, but it will, it will just integrate with all the rest of the gas. So him saying heavier gases is begging the question of his own claim that we're attacking. Yeah, gas go down, go boom, booms his claim. By saying heavier gases, yeah. he's saying gas go down, go boom, boom. Just begging the question again. What? Heavier gases move slower than lighter gases. Heavier gases. Gas go down, go boom, boom. Right, we don't have layers of gases. We don't have layers of gases. We don't have layers of gases. Gas is not layered. Inhomogeneous, anisotropic Nobody mixture. Gonna chant through it. Chant through it, right? Chant through it, coward. Yeah? Those are you boycotting us. This is what you've got to replace you. Chanting retard.
Go on then, carry on chanting while I explain that we've got an anisotropic, inhomogeneous mixture of gases. Doesn't change as you raise now. All, agree oh, right, so definitely going to fundy agree. mute this. Maybe it's me not listening to your really coherent explanation that's going to refute this as you chant straight through it. I'm agreeing. Yeah, you're going to chant straight through it. You're going to agree straight through it before it's stated. <laughs> you already stated. Yeah, shut the fuck up, Dumbo. You're the dumbest person here, as per usual. Yeah, but well, your coward friends have all deserted you, claim it's a boycott. <laughs> so it's just you that has the shit ripped out of you for your non-understanding of how gas works. Yeah, mutter for me. Anisotropic, inhomogeneous mixture of gases, not layered. Not heavier gases going down, oh. go boom, boom. No, that's not what we experience. Sorry, mutter for me. Maybe get about 25 miles away from the mic as you mutter. I'm right here. It, it's still the same thing. It doesn't matter. I agree with what you said, though. You moments earlier said that you had different gases moving down at different speeds because of their different weights. Now it's anisotropic, inhomogeneous mixture of gases as per my explanation, which wouldn't give you layers of gases at different speeds in different weights in different layers then. So you've basically undone your last claim then. So where's the concession? Or maybe just maybe some more chanting? Chant the that it's got weight. Atmosphere is not layered. Atmosphere, so we're going to chant that. Didn't we cover that immediately? I made sure that we stopped. So you just weren't listening to me. You just weren't listening to no, me. I just... You just weren't listening to me, virus. The very thing you projected onto me. Yeah, we definitely covered sphere-shaped areas. The first thing we covered. I made damn sure to stop you and make sure you understood we were covering it too. Would you like to lie about us not covering it now so we can circle jerk again? Chant for me, bitch. Chant atmosphere like we haven't covered it. Chan atmosphere like a sphere-believing fundy bitch and lie about us not having covered it already. Chant and lie. Oh, good dog. What are you talking about? I'm, a... I'm talking about you chanting about atmosphere again when we've already covered it. Are you deaf, dumb, or stupid? I didn't mention atmosphere. You... Oh, really? So it's going to be the lie route? I didn't stop you, rein you in, and make absolutely damn sure that we covered sphere-shaped air. Liar. No. Liar. High-pitched, maybe. Did you atmosphere just now, bro? Come on. You never let me virus. finish. Oh, 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 and now it's back to I'm the one interrupting you when only 30 seconds ago I pointed out the chanting and fundy muting you were using. So it's me not listening to you even though you've most definitely not listened to us cover atmosphere, even though I made damn sure that you acknowledge every word of it. It was difficult, but obviously you're going to project that I'm not listening to you now, aren't you? And lie about having not used atmosphere and then lie again saying that I'm not listening to you. So chant and lie for me, you little bitch. Did we ever get through with that barometer? Oh, what are we going to circle jerk back to the barometer inside a container that you lied about me not letting you make the point of? Another lie that we already covered. Did we ever get Anything else you need to just circle jerk back to, fundy liar? What was my Maybe. point? Maybe. Let's do that again. Yeah, yeah that would be where I want to go. Yeah, and I want to go there now. What was my I point? I want to have my say if I can. Can I? Oh, okay. and fair yeah. enough. I have to chat. Yeah. Akuma you, virus, yeah, listen and shut the hell up, okay? Every time you say gas has mass, gas has mass, no, it doesn't. Yeah, mass is a derived concept. It's not universal. Not all matter has mass. Mass is an extracted calculus. It's an extracted concept. What it actually has is density. And density doesn't abide by the same elements, by acceleration, right? So mass, no, not everything has mass. Only solids and liquids have mass. Gas is, doesn't have it. It doesn't work like that. It only responds to local air pressure differential. It does not have momentum. It cannot be pulled, dragged. It can only be pushed around by other gas pressure and container walls. And that's it. Doesn't have mass, only density. <laughs> May I respond? This is awesome. Is, is that it? A mutter? Is that all we got out of you as the response? This is awesome. Awesome. That's what this is. I love it. This is great. It's called the <laughs> truth.
Gas doesn't have mass. Uh, okay. Is, is going to hole in our shit issue with, with uh, on shirt. gas? We should definitely put that on a shirt. Go for that arm. So, you should sell it. You should make some money. Yeah, off of I will. I what will because you're, you're it's true. Sorry, that's an ad hominem true. attack. Sorry, his argument. You haven't addressed it. That you is not an ad hominem. And now you're talking straight through me as I point out the logical fallacy that you've employed. So that's an ad hominem attack. I'll just take those words and put them on a t-shirt, meaning that they're stupid. Well, no, he's actually had a full-on argument. You've had eight renditions of the same argument, and we've pulled apart your claim that requires mass. So, based on his argument, you're just going to tell him you're going to put it on a T-shirt? Like it's stupid. How is that statement stupid? It's, it's not stupid. It's going to make... So, him... why the fuck would you want to put it on a T-shirt? So, you know gas doesn't have mass by your explanation and your definition of it. So, why are you claiming it, you stupid idiot? That's not true. That's not true. Don't even so say how that. does it have it then if it's not got any resistance to acceleration? Who says it doesn't? I just gave you an ex example it does. Were like, you not listening to me, Nathan? What, the one with the homogeneous layers of gases that are moving in different speeds nope. when we don't have homogeneous layers nope. of gases, we have inhomogeneous anisotropic gas nope. virus. Nope. Did, did you, you not listen it? like you're not listening to me now, chanting through it? Seemed like you chanted I, straight I through it last time. Seems like you're chanting straight through it this time. Maybe you'd like to tell me that I don't listen to your wonderful explanations that don't in any way get addressed. No, Maybe it's that that's the problem. You should continue wrong. to chant straight through the middle of me before I've taken a breath. Now I'm going to take a breath because I need to or I'll die. Hopefully you won't interrupt in that process. <gasps> wonderful. So it doesn't have resistance to acceleration. We've covered that now. I think it's ten times. At no point did you square away that argument. It just doesn't meet your definition that you needed for it to go down, go boom, boom. You reasserted atmosphere twice. You reasserted barometer in terms of the question you also lied about me not addressing or listening to. So we've had lots of circle jerking virus. You have also used an idea that gases have got different speeds. Therefore, some of them are going down at a quicker rate than others are going down when you assume their weight. We also had you concede that gas doesn't behave like that. What we experience is anisotropic, inhomogeneous, not in layers. You conceded that. That's but you're way. back to circle jerk into it. And when I conclude that you've just circle jerked back to this point, maybe you can interrupt and circle jerk into it straight as I conclude it. Second time you've used this argument. We're just going through the motions with you again, virus, because you haven't listened to us. Okay, so... Well, that means you didn't hear my example about... Oh, so it's back to projecting on that I haven't listened to you. Didn't hear your example. So you can reassert something we've already heard twice already. Now, I've heard all your examples and we've addressed them all. So has Arwin, so has Brian, so has everybody here and the audience. But you're going to lie that we haven't listened to you again, scumbag. Well, repeat it to me. Which one? The barometer one about it being inside a container that we definitely oh, answered? That that maybe interrupt immediately as I start summarising every argument that proves you're a liar. Going to fundy mute that when you've just asked me to do it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Carry on fundy muting me. Yeah, I was just about to summarise all your arguments that we've absolutely listened to. Proving you're a liar. You are. You're a liar. You, you want to circle jerk for the second time on all these arguments? We've already addressed every one of them. You haven't listened to our arguments. You've definitely projected that we don't listen to you, though, eh? Talk about all your arguments. I've definitely addressed every single Mutter one. like a little bitch. We've heard all your arguments. You're just lying. So what was my example I gave? I tried to rattle them off and you started interrupting me immediately only two minutes ago. We're going to go through this do -si do Second time you've used this one, too. Maybe lie about using this. I've already attempted to start summarising your arguments and I've summarised them previously. So don't lie. Don't demand that I summarise them for a third time when I've already done it, having ripped them apart in every instance so you can get away with your lie that we haven't listened to you. We have. That's because you haven't gave my example. I didn't. I didn't hear your example, um, virus. But uh, if it involves I know you did, uh, what everybody speaks about don't having you. weight then you're in trouble. So you give me your example there then. Yeah, I know you didn't hear me because Nathan talked through me. He didn't hear me either. But S Sorry, give me your example. Say it again. Okay, so yes. there. What you were saying earlier about it being closer to the phase change because it's heavier, that's not necessarily true. 
Not when I'm talking I'm about what the heavy gas is. I never said it was heavier. I never said it was heavier. You were claiming it had it was heavy, which means it had I didn't say what you just said that. there. You were talking. Sorry, shut up, virus. You've just projected your argument by way of burden of proof reversal onto Brian. He's now explaining that it wasn't the case. You were claiming weight. So what, as he points out how you're just a scumbag reversing the burden, you're going to talk straight through him. No, he's stopping you because you're a scumbag. That's not what he said. It's what you said. No. Yes. What I said. He claimed weight. Shut up. That means shut no, up interfering with Brian's absolutely justified interruption as you claim he said it's something he hasn't. Now shut up. Uh, yeah, 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 thank yeah. you, Nathan. What yeah. I said was that was that virus was trying to equate more dense gases with a phase change to a liquid, right? But that doesn't yeah. change in being yeah. gases. And yeah, yeah shut the fuck no, up, finish. virus. What is no, your malfunction? Carry... Whenever somebody pummels the living shit out of you, you feel that it's what a self-defense mechanism to just blart through every word they say. You just said shut up. What part of this don't you understand? He's wrong about Shut up! He's in the middle of saying something. You've projected your claim onto him. Now, after being interrupted, totally justifiable by Brian, you're going to shut up. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah, my point was is that Voivus was trying to bring the argument back to a phase change argument by talking about <coughs> more dense gases. But more dense gases are still in the phase of gases. So they still behave as gases. They still do not resist acceleration. All those little tiny gas particles do not resist acceleration. And for something to resist acceleration, it needs to have inertia. So them not resisting acceleration, they don't care if it's carbon dioxide, they don't care if it's helium. It's not, they're not resisting acceleration. So that means they don't have inertia. They don't have inertia, they can't be considered mass. They can't be considered mass, then they can't be mass times acceleration. They can't be weight. They can't have weight in his paradigm of what weight is. It's 11 times. I was going to repeat that word for word until I got interrupted. I was going to repeat that word for word. And I was going to address that until I got interrupted. And I was, that's exactly what I was saying that you were saying. I wasn't saying anything different. God that I claim something about heavier gases. I never said the word heavier gases. You said the word heavier gases. Yeah. Heavy. I was weight. talking about you responding to exactly. me. You. I didn't say anything about you claiming heavier gases. You mentioned me in oh, the yeah, word yeah. heavier gases. But meanwhile, that gas doesn't go down, go oh, boom, boom. It, it fills the space. So space is fake. Gas would fill it. It's not resisting anything. It's just going to follow whatever vector it's got into whatever volume it's got. So we wouldn't be breathing if the sky was a vacuum. It's the end of the argument. It's not going down, right, going boom, boom. It's not got all, mass. It presses in all directions and lil until the pressure is equalized through container walls. Can I make yeah, a comment the only on that, thing please? that can manipulate that is temperature. Sorry, Neil. Sure. Yeah, space is fake. Go ahead, Bryce. What have you got to say about that? pressure is temperature i wasn't finna say that requires, that requires a, a container also so for a gas pressure gradient temp you need temperature to create it and temperature requires a container and for vacuum you need a you need a container to create it because what? a container is needed for all three things gas pressure temperature and vacuum so why do the, why do the, the gas laws presuppose containers do you think virus like you said in your comment all the gas laws presuppose containers why do they do that sorry man y'all ain't listening to me so asking you based on your comment you said most gas laws presupposes a container why and do you have other gas laws that don't presuppose a container and don't ask me now that y'all ain't listening to me bro should have asked that earlier 
I'm all ears. We're all all ears. We're all listening. What do you suppose? Man, I tried to explain it earlier, man. Y'all wasn't hearing it, so. Oh, jeez. You know what? So you're Come still on. crying about earlier instead of addressing what I'm asking you right now? Answer the question. Nah, I don't feel like going through the same shit. Nah, nah, you, you're good now? He, he's pulling out the violins, Chocolate. He's pulling yeah, out the violins. No. No, let me, no, let me okay. go get a Kleenex. <laughs> no problem, no problem. So we, we can't have gas pressure without a container. It's a necessary antecedent. That's why it's in all the gas laws. It's there for a reason, because it's required to be there. If it wasn't required, it wouldn't be in the law. There'd be no point in being there if it wasn't needed. It is needed. It's there in all those gas laws now, isn't it? The V, the volume, the volume of the containment that the gas would require to be at pressure. So without the container, there can be no pressure. So the sky vacuum's fake. Space is fake. Everything that's claimed to take place in that area, that region, is also fake. Satellite, space travel, moon visits, all fake. You can't That's even calculate gas pressure it. without a container. Why they brace against it so much? Because it, it's over. It's done. But, but he himself, but he himself, he himself said earlier that gas takes the, the shape of its container. Yep, yep, I heard him. But that's weird because Earth doesn't have a container. So yeah, uh, if you don't pay attention to my example with the barometer, then you would have known that barometers read what's on the outside of the container, not on the inside. Outside of the barometer's container, but the gas pressure it's reading, how how was that achieved without containment? Reading, as per the heliocentric version, the as per the, of the fundy interruption the of the question, as per the fundy muting of the question that's coming your way. So, the barometer, I'll start again. How can you have the gas pressure in existence to measure with a barometer if there's no containment? Very simple. It measures what's on the outside of, of the, the barometer. Just covered that. Did, did you not listen? Maybe project that I didn't listen to you when I've just said, yeah, on the outside of the barometer as a container, but it's measuring existing gas pressure. And we're saying, how can we have existing gas pressure to measure with a barometer on the outside of the containment of the barometer if we haven't got containment for the gas pressure? So this is the third rendition of his shitty barometer claim that he didn't listen to the rendition and rebuttal to. It's come three times. I've just given the third rendition of the rebuttal to that. And total stony silence. Can I finish it? What? Finish it? You asked it and I addressed it. Oh my fucking God. Oh my God. Oh, I can't protest that I wasn't listened to. When it was listened to, responded to, and the response that I got was met with on the inside of the barometer? Oh, no, 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 it's the outside of the containment the barometer has. So that's been addressed then. Maybe bleat about how we didn't listen. What's on the inside of the barometer? So I did listen to you then. We're not talking about the containment of barometers, though, are we? We're talking about the nature of reality. Rather than the nature of man-made barometers, you complete clown. You just showed... The so we're not talking about man-made barometers. I'll say it again because he ignored me. We're talking about oh the gas God. pressure, how we can have it to measure with this man-made device. If we didn't have containment, we wouldn't have it. It would fill the volume. So I don't know why you're concerned about this man-made device measuring existing gas pressure when we were asking how we can have it if the world that the heliocentric model lays down is true, the sky would be a vacuum and we'd all be dead. There'd be no pressure for your barometer to measure. This is what I was talking about, chocolate. It, what's going on here for the audience to, for 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 i want this for to go i want i'm saying this for akam virus's uh, benefit but also for the audience we are very aware like me and nathan and chocolate and arwen and everybody we're all very aware that virus is claiming a container to the gas 
pressure he's that he's speaking about, right? But that container is gravity, right? Now, besides gravity being 106, the gravity he's claiming being 106 years out of date, that gravity is a force of gravity, which is mass times acceleration. So he's claiming that the atmosphere, right? Right, it's in a sphere shape due to the force of gravity. He's claiming that this atmosphere has weight. That means it has to have mass in his in his in his uh, in his belief because weight is caused by mass times acceleration <clears throat> now we have shown here today that gas does not exhibit mass because mass is inertia as defined by physics and gas inertia is a resistance to acceleration and gas uh, uh, gas behavior is anything but a resistance to acceleration it's an acceptance of acceleration not a resistance to it so gas does not exhibit inertia, so it cannot be considered mass. So it can't be mass times acceleration giving it weight. So it, so his claim of a, a container, which he threw out there, but it, I'm sure confused some people who weren't aware of this, he was throwing that out there as if he is claiming a container, but the container he's claiming is gravity causing the gas to have weight, which would mean the gas would have to have mass Right, which would mean the gas would have to exhibit inertia, but gas does not exhibit inertia, so it can't be mass, so it can't be weight in his power in his paradigm, so it can't be gravity. Even if he wants to claim a force of gravity, physics alone, even with him claiming a force of gravity, show that gas cannot exhibit any 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 weight. Yeah, it's not his atmosphere, his ball container, right. gravity. But on that. 12th rendition of the exact same argument met with the exact same fundy muting from virus as you got to the conclusion i'm going to say a huge massive enormous thank you to both discord and g plus panels for making today's after show possible of course a massive thank you to all of you in either nathan oakley 1980 or nathan oakley programming streams for hopefully smashing the super chat liking commenting sharing subscribing hitting the paypal link and all that good stuff also, below this video, you can get £50 for swapping your UK electricity supplier to Octopus Energy. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video.